Who missed that song? I missed my volume. It is <laughs> Collider Live, and we are back. Happy New Year, everyone. Woo! Happy New Year. Is that better? No, still not better. It's all right. Can't I hear, hear myself, you. but that's okay. I can't hear myself. I can hear you. I can hear you a bit. Good. Um, welcome back to the show, Collider Live. Everybody, it's 2019, and we are ready to rumble. And let's start talking here. Roxy Stryer, how was your New Year so far? Oh, it's fucking great. Yeah? Did you party? <laughs> One. Did you, did you party? Uh, yeah, I did actually you did? party. Okay. Did you? Where, in Boston? No, no, I was here. Yeah. I, I didn't leave the oh, whole time. Leave. I did not leave. I did not leave. On I the stayed. couch, bummed out, watched TV? Uh, it was the first time I've ever been here. Oh, do you like LA. it? In LA. I've been here for 10 years, and it was the first time I was here for the holidays. And did you like that? Uh, you, you know. <laughs> no. It was awesome. There you go. It was a rad, the right. best, had the best time, but I did party. Okay. Riley, you don't remember any of your New Year's Eve? Uh, it's f- it's foggy. Foggy. Yeah. yeah. Did you have a good time? No, I had a great time. Good. Yeah. Lots of wine. Yeah. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. That yeah. Uber ride was uh, a blink. <laughs> someone that conversation has definitely changed five years ago to what I would have said, how was your New Year's, yeah. as opposed to now. No, we, we got pretty rowdy on New Year's Eve. Maybe still rowdy, yeah. but it's a different type of rowdy. Yes, 100%. Yeah. Um, rowdy with a wife. Yeah. Rowdy different. with a wife. Yeah. You're, you're <laughs> never going to be not rowdy. That's yeah, just correct. who you are by your yep. nature. But um, Josh McCougar, obviously. Yeah. And <laughs> this this is to show you that we, we we actually play in the same league now, Yeah. because I was, uh, I was at the Grove... Which is the, <laughs> if you guys know here, awful of during the holidays. Uh, it's terrible. Uh, are you on no, 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 wait, Have no, you been a million there? people. Well, let me clarify, yeah. let me clarify, like let me clarify what he means because people. the Grove is magical when yes. it comes to the, the aesthetic yes. of it. Yes. yes. But the people and how many people it comes to shopping, like either right before the holidays or right after, is terrible. I waited yeah. an hour and 15 minutes to pull into the lot there. That's there? What I, so let me, uh-huh. let me tell you, I went, I went twice. what I'm talking about. I went twice to the Grove. And the first time I went, this is the best. I walked up. So they have the Santa house. It's right before Christmas. And they have the Santa house. And Santa's in there. And the kids wait. And so my daughter's like, we were just there. And I said, we're not doing Santa this year. Because yeah. it, the line is insanity. insanity. Yeah. And my daughter's like, we got to go. I want to go. I'm, like, I'm telling you. I'm like, look, if the line is, if, if I go to this, knowing that the woman's going to yeah. say no. I'm like, I'm going to go. If the woman says that the line is, if it waits like a half an hour or 40 minutes, then we'll stay. Okay. So, so long. So I walk over. You pay her 20 or like say two hours. Just wait. <laughs> and, I look, and I look at this woman with my daughter and I go, how long is the wait? And she looks as calm as can be. She goes, about three hours. <laughs> and I go, and I go, oh, my <laughs> God. Right in, her, right in her face. And she, because she said it's so calm, like, oh, you man. moron. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, what about are you? Three hours? She's like, you're lucky I don't say a week, dipshit. Yeah. Is there um, like an online sign up for that or something? I don't know what. It was, it was later on in the day. But oh. then I went back again and I'm there and we just went to go to Wood Ranch. We said, and my, the family, it's this easy. We're sitting down, go to Wood Ranch. I go, and my daughter was like, I gotta get this. She, she read three Harry Potter books in like two weeks. She's seven. She's nice. fired through these things. She's like, That's I awesome. wanna read the fourth one. And I was like, it's better than her playing the iPad. I'll run to Barnes and Noble. I'll get it. And that way, just deal with the baby. And that's all I get. And I can eat my fucking chicken. Good so, dad. I, so I just <laughs> do a beeline to Barnes and Noble. And I'm going like Jesse Owens style. Yeah. I'm going, I'm, I'm, I'm fast. Dust, dust, Boom, dip. moving around, going yeah. so quick. And I get up and I find I, I maneuver through the store. I go all the way up to the, the, this growth. Barnes and Noble is like three stories. I know where it is. I get it, and then I see the line for it. I'm like, screw this. I go to the bottom of the floor, yeah. get it. I'm out. That's the trick. And then I go yep. back and I'm back into 100 miles an hour. And it's like Tron. I'm like I'm in my lane and nothing can pull me out except, oh. And I look at his Makuga. I see, I see a, a strange walking <laughs> I, Christian. I didn't see this down. coming. Yeah. No. How did I not see that coming? <laughs> so, so he's walking Plot head twist. down, like literally doing like the forest or the uh, Terminator Two yeah. run, just like yeah, boom, 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 I was moving right. He was, and I, and I just go, oh, yeah. And he tur- he looks at me, and I think he thought it was just somebody else yelling something. I thought it might have been a fan or something. And yeah. he stops, and he's like, "What's up? What's up? What's up?" And then yeah. we like talk. I was with Amanda and her sister and her two little kids, and uh, and he was like, "All right, I gotta go to." Ranch, and we both were like in the same thing of like this is the worst place. We just knew right it. now. We just knew it uh, because I do agree. It's magical. It's cool. It's everything. But there are so many people. It's impossible. You got to maneuver. Anywhere. You got to maneuver. The stores. You don't and go into the stores. We had just gone to the Cheesecake no. Factory uh, that for, for for like a late lunch, and we'd beaten the rush. They were like, it's a thirty-five minute wait, but it only t- right. they buzzed us Not ten three minutes hours. Later. Yeah, <laughs> three hours. So we're we're at, and I, you guys, I'm I'm throwing this to the table as if this was the proper behavior, okay? Which I know probably it may not have been. So we're at Wood Ranch, or we're at Cheesecake Factory. Everybody knows. 
other things good at the Cheesecake Factory. And it is pandemonium, right? I feel bad for the staff there. I mean, the, sure. the amount of stuff they have to go through is just bad. Especially at the Grove. Yeah. Oh, and on a Saturday. Yeah, yeah just crazy. Yeah. So we get there, we sit down, and like two tables over in a booth, these kids are legitimately screaming. Mm. Okay, And I'm thinking, okay, this kid's crying. There's nothing the mom can do about it. But I do my due diligence. I'm like, baby, I got to go to the bathroom. And I walk by, and it's just three moms sitting there chatting as their kids Lose scream it. at each other. They're climbing the walls. They're like, we're having fun. And they're just legitimately screaming, and these mothers aren't even paying attention to what is happening. That's not right. Okay? It's you got to say something. It's insanity. There's some drinks they're in front of them. Be responsible. Stick Sesame Street on your yes. iPad they're all drinking like a martini and they're yeah, just they're... laughing and whatever so they're screaming and I the, the poor waitress she's smiling and she, and she turns around and I meet eyes and she's just like she's living she's done. right yeah. Just not having it. So we're eating and these ladies finally get up with their kids and the kids are running and they're screaming at each other as they're leaving and I just start <laughs> I clapped. <laughs> right? And the woman looked at looked me she goes, oh that's nice and I was like thanks and the woman waitress or woman mom? The woman mom. Yeah, yeah. And I listen I have, I'm a patient person when it comes to a lot of things, yeah. but that, like, it just started to get to me. I get it. You'll, you'll feel a little different when you have kids. I know, and that's why I'm asking you. You are the least patient person. <laughs> me? You are, <laughs> you are not patient. You're not patient. patient. Am I? No, you're no. not patient. Huh, okay. No, you get, you I was just trying to see if the table We down. know yeah. you don't like cheese. <laughs> yeah. No, you, fi- you, you get fired up pretty quick. But, yeah. uh, but I was which, short for Which is okay. But yeah. here's the thing. I'm at this, I'm, I'm at the lunch, whatever. All the parent has to do is either, like, take the kid. Listen, I understand on a plane, if your kid is sick and crying, there's yeah, nothing, nothing you can, you can do. do. But you're at the Cheesecake Factory just having a martini while your kids go bonkers. You're, you're, mm-hmm. you're, you're wrong and right at the same same time here. Yeah. You're, you're right in the fact that there should be, like, f- my kid, my kids, if there's the baby, you can't, we're yeah. going to do about it. So you find, like I said, we have Sesame Street, she, where she plays with her Elmo thing, and she eats, she shovels food in her face, and she's good. I thought no we're, screens. I, we, we've been transitioning. <laughs> you no, know, after a year and a half, we're, tra- tra- we're transitioning <laughs> now to, like, she gets like a half an hour of Sesame Street a day. Um, so, but winning, but now, but again, my daughter, who my oldest, she gets a little riled up. It's like, hey, we're at dinner, right? Shh, read your book, relax. That's not good manners. You have a good, you have a conversation, you parent them. Yeah, so and if, she, if these your parents older were daughter doing nothing, screaming, and you say to her, relax, I, if she doesn't, what do you do? I take her outside, you, yeah. and, I, and I say, yeah. I say, either gonna behave, and two things are gonna happen, you're gonna get in the car, and you're gonna go home, and you're not gonna get any of this. There's no dessert, there's nothing, and I'm gonna take away your book. If you want, and then you got to earn the book back. Ooh. Yeah, so you got to make sure you, ha- you have a conversation. You can't let them scream and yell because the thing is, you got to be considerate of other people. Correct. That being said, right? You st- I, I say this because that's how I was. If a kid just went, ah, shut the fuck up. You, yeah. you, you just want the kids to shop. You're right. eating. Right. right. That's two actually. Uh, <laughs> you're eating. Um, but it's like it's you'll feel different. I understand that once I don't have, you kids, have kids, and like Amanda got a little a little upset that I did that. But I just wanted those parents to know <laughs> that what they were doing was not good parenting. Right. But they, these kids weren't you. sick; they weren't crying. I get crying. I get sick. I think you probably got that message across. Good. Did you yeah. have the conversation with them though, or did they just see the clap? They saw the clap. Yeah, that that to me looks like someone's like they, they don't understand why you were pissed off. I think they got it. Well, I think everybody think in the rest it? got Not, it. I, mean, I think that they know that he was annoyed, but I don't think that they knew that he was annoyed because I, they weren't reprimanding their kids the right way. I want that woman, I want that parent to go away from that restaurant thinking, oh my God, I ruined those people's lunch, but I know they won't no, because they're going to think you're an asshole. They're going to think you're an asshole. That's sure. what they're going to think. Um, but anyway, that's that's what happens <laughs> in the Grove. Um, <laughs> don't it, a lot don't of, go there. A lot of event stuff, a lot of things happen, like, whether it was movies I caught up on, there's a lot of big mm-hmm. fights, this stupid thing that Floyd Mayweather yeah, was that in. Was dumb. That's so dumb. I don't know what you're talking about. He uh, fought, he he fought, fought some like a young Korean kickboxer. And and I gotta tell you, it looked it, it looked a little staged. It's super staged. It looked a little staged. But what was the dumb part that he did that? Or did why? Something happen? Why is he? He was supposed he... to give him nine minutes or something. He knocked this guy out in a minute. Nine? Yeah. yeah. Nine, or maybe it was. Of the last eighth. eighth. Yeah, yeah. It was going to be the eighth. 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 It didn't go to the eighth round. It didn't. No. no. And he just beat up. The, he was like a nineteen-year-old. He was Thai or something. He was a kickboxer. I don't know. And just... he went over there to the, to Japan and he beat this kid up. Like it was, it was weird. Yeah. It was very weird. He, and he made millions he went, of dollars. He went yes. to beat a Thai kid up in Japan. And yeah, mm. he just beat him yeah. up for 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 no it's reason. Not, very nice. for, well, <laughs> not no for reason. Money, money. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, but, I would hope for it money. Ma- Otherwise, well, it's illegal. Pacquiao, Pacquiao <laughs> called him out. Pacquiao yeah. called him out on. A lot of people called him out on. It was a stunt, and he, and he you know put some cash in his pocket. And 
I get that, but it it was it was a farce. Does that it, negatively affect somebody's career in any way, shape, or form? The way boxing is today, no. no. And the way Floyd Mayweather is, everybody's like, oh, this is another Floyd Mayweather thing because he's thing. a jackass. Yeah, you, no one thought he was going to lose that fight. I said, look, that's what he's been doing. Though he's doing stunts. I mean, yes. even Conor McGregor, who was who put up a much better fight than most people would think, it was still a stunt. It was right. still a stunt fight. Why is it okay to be a jackass? Like, why do we say that? Like, it's something that's fine now. It's like, do, not. I, I feel like this ha- this came up so many times over my break where, like, I have a friend. They, they're not a very good friend. It's like, whatever, but that's my jackass friend. Right. Or, like, <laughs> we're talking about a well, it's celebrity. It's like Manny being Manny, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like anybody yeah. who's a jackass. But, I mean, that's the thing is that you say that Manny being Manny. It's like that. Manny being Manny, just yeah. Just somebody being who they are. You accept them that they're but a I douche. Don't, I, like, don't. I think 2019. Mm-mm. You're not going to take it. I, you're done. I just so don't... you're saying to me, be more patient. No, I. By the way, I'm the least patient. Oh, I okay. lack any kind of patience. That's a big twenty. I'm going to say that that's me. true. I have none. I have <laughs> no patience. That's so true. I'm not throwing shade at yeah. you, but it takes one to know one. Mm-hmm. Right. I, but I don't know. I'm just. <laughs> I'm done being like, yeah, that's my jackass friend. It's fine. No. Like, do, don't call, be call a jackass. Them out or right. just don't be friends with them. Don't anymore. be friends. With, I don't want to support people in my life that are just. Jackasses, jackasses to be jackasses. Yeah. I understand. Or celebrities or right. athletes or anybody who's a jackass. I guess yeah. it's the level of jackassery that is happening. Cool. Correct. I've got a percentage of jackass right. in me, but like <laughs> yeah. I think you've got to be under 15%. It just depends on what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that it depends. Like if there's, if there's certain things that are said that you're like, oh, that's, there's, not a lot, there's not a lot of couth there couth. On, on that. Good word. Um, mm, I like that word. Uh, okay. Couth. Yes. Learn this word this break. Oh. Just now? So I've oh. never heard the word couth before. I'm at Grammy's house. And I say, so listen, yeah. this is actually fucking amazing. That's too, wow, it's been a, a long time. Don't worry so. about it. Let's go to the story. So <laughs> so I'm sitting at Grammy's house, and she used the word couth. I said, I don't know what that is. And and she just got an Alexa. Oh. And she was yeah. so excited. Yeah. So she goes, the Alexa. For the greatest. So yeah. she she wanted to show off. Your grandpa had it. over there in the corner again. <laughs> so I just excited. got it, too. No, Alexa's I awesome. got one. It's she's, awesome. she's 91. She just set it up. She wanted to prove she knew how to use Alexa. So she goes, Alexa, and she pauses for a little bit. Remember, she has to say something. Alexa won't respond. Yeah. Says, "Define couth," and Alexa goes, "It's a slang word. Couth is a slang word for feces." And right. and Grammy's going, "Alexa, Alexa, define couth." Couth is a slang, and they kept thinking she was saying poop, oh. and she could not <laughs> enunciate. She's like sitting there over and over again. Define couth, Alexa, like crying, trying That's to really get funny. it to say what it I was. I wish you were taping that with your phone. So I was like, oh, feces, got it. Now right. I understand, Grammy. It means feces, it's no worries. Feces, right. R- uh, Riley texts me. He's like, we got this, Alexa. Do you know you can play Jeopardy on Alexa? Yeah. And I was like, no hey, way. Oh, yeah, you can yeah. say, hey, Alexa, play Jeopardy. And it plays and you 12 play. extra clues from the day's game. Yeah. And you can play upwards of like a week before. Mm. So I have like I don't know I'm I, my stats right now on J six are insane. Uh, it's it's difficult because the questions are tough. They're, yeah. they're tough. I thought for sure I was sharing this wonderful knowledge with oh, you, yeah. oh, and he's Jeffrey, like, you know, he yeah. That. <laughs> His text back to me was just couldn't have been more th- like less thrilling. Right. He's like he's like yeah yeah way ahead of you. His original text was I know stupid. <laughs> yes, yeah. pretty much. That was the original. And then he but, but, he, but he showed Kuth. And yes, didn't do, he it. Showed some do you guys have Fallon and telling patience. you jokes? No, yeah. no. Can you do that? Yeah. See, here's the uh-huh. thing. Here's the thing. I need to get myself one of those because yeah. they're, they're I, I got the Hey Google and it sucks. Well, Alexa you works. Just, you don't need the whole Alexa. You need the uh, Echo. The Echo oh. dot. This the just reminds me of something. I have the Echo, but Wait, I have a big one. I got a little house cleaning I got to do here right. because Uh-oh. I have to give credit to the Afterthoughts boys. Mm. You looked at me like it was going to be to me. And no, then... not you. He was looking at me, <laughs> no, too. No, like, no, no, no. Afterthoughts, mm, boys. This is uh, where my interior I song have... goes. No, no, no. Listen, listen, listen. But, but no, it, it comes to a bigger conversation. I have converted and become obsessed Spotify? with Spotify. Yeah, no no, I know. Obs- I'm obsessed with it. Can I use your login? Uh, why don't you just make your own? It's free. It's free. Mm, whatever. All right. It, but it, <laughs> it's, it's really it, easy. It's really easy, and I was yeah. wrong because I thought. I guess I've done since I tried to use it two years ago, and to what it is today, mm-hmm. very easy. Very On your easy. TV. You, you can put it on. See, that was the thing is that I looked at Roku about two, three weeks ago and it wasn't available. Magically, one day I'm going through it and there it was. And I'm like, okay. And then I put it on my computer. It's on my phone. If someone made, someone, a fan had made a Schmodown um, Spotify list and oh. it's got every theme song that anyone's ever come out to, to the, uh, the Schmodown. It's like 75 songs. And I was listening nice. to that. It was amazing. My, my now one we, year now old. You don't is, have to pull us into your office to watch a uh, new song. That's true. Yeah. My, my one year old is like dancing in the middle of it too. It's like it's just a ton more songs. 
Pandora's gone. That's out of my life now. Oh, Spotify no. is fantastic. But we Tell were me. the last ones. We, you're the last one because it's it, it is it is a far superior. And I give credit to Snelling and uh, and Jay Williams for because I listened to the conversation they had about it after we were talking about. It. I was like, all right, if it's so easy, easy to use, then I'll try it. And they were right. So can you mm. use it for the Echo for the Alexa? Thing. Well, you can use it with the Hey Google. It's, okay, because I, th- I think Alexa you plays can. Amazon Music. What's the Hey yeah, Google? Yeah, because that's it's like it's, it's the, the Google same thing. It's, like, the, it's not the same thing. Is it's it sh- not? It's, it's the dollar store version of Alexa. I'm so glad because I got this for Christmas and yeah. and there was talk. There was like, oh, almost got you the Google Home, but this oh, one seemed home, better. The home, the There was the thing. You know what I got it? It's like it's I don't know. It's like seventy five bucks, and I got it um, when we went to. It was a very nice gift, but it, when we went to the Cobra Kai. Right. Um, thing they they handed out a bunch of these things and it was it was it was a, it was a very nice gift but I just it, I just don't like it. wait I was at that thing they you they, were, you I were, didn't get the uh, you were hammered you left late I, I still think it's kind of crazy though yeah, you left late st- no even, we stayed even, the whole time yeah <laughs> oh so I missed it you missed it is what I'm gonna call something Alexa it's like a very popular millennial name mm. it's not like Siri that's oh. Billy Joel's daughter's name it, it's Siri very, sounds like very an old lady popular yeah. well nobody's sitting there on accent I have tons of friends named Alexa you can you change can... the wake word really yeah I think you can change to it. anything I think, yeah because I think you can true. I think <laughs> I'm, st- I'm still getting used to it I mean I spent the rest of my break you know farting around with this thing mm, yeah it's pretty it's awesome good. cool I mean I just basically use the Alexa it's in the kitchen in the morning so I usually just you know either play yacht rock their yacht rock playlist is fantastic yeah uh, or like a morning wake up and then I play jeopardy and it's just like our song in the kitchen now we have now it's awesome because it's just our kitchen music it's fantastic it's great I, got, yeah. I need to the get weather. it the but... weather I shout from my bed <clears throat> hey Alexa yeah. what's the weather you can do you start your day link your calendar yeah so they'll it's read your calendar seconds. they'll do the I, I do traffic now, I love the old, the old farts in the room are finally yeah. discovering things that these people probably have for three years yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. exactly and we're probably setting off people's stuff too right now we keep saying hey Alexa people are all yeah. there like, stop talking idiots um, but like I said for the Spotify thing I'm, there's a Sesame Street <clears throat> list but it gets into the main topic here today and this is what I want everybody to listen to because can we bring up that clip boys this this was going yeah. around this was going around the internet and so the first thing I'm going to do is that I want everybody to hear this clip and I want you to hear what he said what Grover people were saying that Grover cursed it's that first one yeah so let's let's turn the volume up what do you guys hear for for Grover when, when he when he talks here this is the first thing everybody I'm going to ask everybody in the room of course mm-hmm. it's that thing. Okay, all right. Yes, yes, that sounds like an excellent Okay, let's stop there. Roxy, what did you hear? I got to tell you, the first thing I heard is sounds like. You said you heard sounds like an excellent idea. Sounds okay, like an what excellent do you idea hear? What, first do you, thing I heard. what do you hear right now? It, okay, I've listened to this thing before. Okay, this, so what did you just hear? I heard the F word. Okay, and the okay. F word. All right, you did not hear it sounds like. Okay, you hear so now, it's an effing right, excellent idea. This, yeah. this is, now, this is what I want everyone to do. Now, I want you to listen to yeah. and hear that's a fucking excellent idea. Mm-hmm. Just hear that. Play it. A that's a fucking like excellent, excellent idea. idea. No, I hear it. Okay, now, now go back, and I want to, I want you to hear that sounds like an excellent idea. Okay. Yes. Move the camera. Yes, yes, that sounds like an excellent idea. Oh, it's, a, farts. it's an optical yeah. illusion. Yes. Or, or the audio illusion. Yes. Oh, Isn't it crazy? Do it again. Yes, yes, that sounds like an excellent idea. Because there's, and because Frank Oz tweeted. Frank, like, oh, Frank, like, Oz Frank Oz goes, Frank Oz goes, hey this. morons, no, Grover didn't say the f bomb, idiots. It just, it sounds. sounds like us. It, it does. Yes, yes, that sounds like an excellent idea. Uh, now I can't hear the f word. Yeah, now but, now, but now listen to it. Now listen to yes, that's a fucking excellent idea. Yes, that sounds like an excellent idea. Ah, <laughs> Isn't it crazy? It's, it's crazy. crazy. It's just put it in your head. <laughs> you. I quit yeah. world. It's like I it's like know. whatever you want to hear for that t- time, and I, I was, it was that's why this is so different than remember the white and gold. <laughs> Go over, take it easy. Remember you the guys play? white and gold dress and the yes. whatever. Yes. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, but but that one I couldn't see the other thing. Right. With right. Laurel and Yanni, I could not hear the other thing. Yeah. With this, this one, you, this is crazy. Yeah. This, one. this one's That's very different wild. because you can you can change it depending on what you want to hear for the time you play it. So I thought it was very, because I had left it open and I didn't realize that my daughter, my seven year old, walks over and she goes. 
Grover dropped the F-bomb. And I'm like, uh-oh. And, and, my, and my wife goes, what's the F-bomb? And my daughter goes, farts! <laughs> I was like, ah, works for me. Sure, w- sure. Work, works for me. <laughs> I was like, so, farts! Yeah. Yeah, who, so how did that get discovered? Like, one parent's watching it and is like... I guess somebody was listening to it, and when, when they heard it, they said, did Grover just say that? And they clipped it out, and, and that hit it, and it just, you know, and it, it went viral. viral. Because, if you, because, again, if you're, he, if you're listening for mm-hmm. it, you'll find it. But My mind is blown. Yeah, Grover clearly isn't going to say it. Yeah. But I just thought it was a very, it was very funny. But no, Grover did not drop the f bomb. But it certainly <laughs> does. It's an audio uh, illusion, as I think Mark Hamill actually tweeted out about. Do you think it. anybody yes. editing that was like, uh oh? Or you think everybody there was like, oh no, this is sounds like? I think they know the script, and I think they they really? have it all there, the production it. and everything, and they, they just moved hear it. on. They, they didn't hear they it. They didn't hear it. Cause, no, because Frank Oz did this great. He stuck up for the whole process. Right. He's like, we right. entertain kids the whole time. You know, you're doing this care and love. We would never say that. No. Oh, never. of course they never would. Right. But I just wonder if there's one like. If anybody picked it up, like, yeah, oh, what? we want to change yeah, that. They want, yeah. Right. Hey guys, we might want to retake that because it sounds like Frank's saying fucking excellent idea. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, he's. Yeah. I think he said he didn't even say it. It wasn't oh. even his voice today oh, okay. that day Grover. or whatever. But really? He's still, is it he always he, Grover? Uh, yeah, but I think I he. So. I thought he said that. Did you see that in the article know. that you sent? It doesn't he, matter. The point. Uh, the thing. It's just. It was just. The, it was just. That was a crazy, crazy clip because Sesame Street once again has saved my life with the uh, because the, the the youngest one's obsessed. Oh yeah, Why Momo. Can't I, I can't make that sound. Sounds like sounds fine. Sound fine. Sounds like an excellent idea. Sounds like an excellent idea. Yeah, we're all terrible at it. That's a fucking excellent idea. I agree. You're so lucky that your kids like Sesame Street instead of the other crap. Well, I mean, my daughter likes some of the other crap too, but the oldest, but the youngest, just it's it's. Obsessed with Elmo. Mm. Obsessed. What's up with that dog show? Which or one? Paw, Paw People. Paw, Paw Patrol. Patrol. Paw Patrol. Yeah, my daughter loves it. Yeah. Still, I mean, still, did I mean, she like PJ Masks? PJ Masks. Yeah. PJ Masks. She likes that one too. Yeah. The, oh, I have a picture of that. I got to show These you guys. Are good ones. My the the youngest walks around and puts hats and stuff all over, on our head, and she came walking out with a PJ mask over her face, like the <laughs> it, one one with, like like the superhero, and it just like it, it didn't would scream if you tried to take it off her face. Um, but not at the Cheesecake Factory. Not no. at the Cheesecake Factory. Mm-hmm. Watched a lot of shit over, over the right over down. the. Uh, I watched a lot of stuff. Um, I finally saw the favorite. Favorite, excuse me, not the favorite. Favorite. Over it. Um, texted Good. Copster immediately. Easily the best movie for me out of the three that the, that the director has done. Mm. Um, I this is the most, guy. Yeah, I thought it the most con- coherent um, storyline out of the three. Didn't love the ending. I, you know, I, I mean, haven't seen it. It wasn't your favorite ending? <laughs> nah, Show like Maroney! Hey, 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 it's Maroney. 2019. I'm still here. Can we start yeah. doing it? Yeah. 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 Co- Cops, did you, did you enjoy the ending? I did, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I liked it. I, I can see like some of the issues with it. It's it. I don't want to spoil anything, but yeah. you know, it's not the most definitive ending. Um, but yeah, it's it's that perfect like dark sense of humor that it's, he has. It's a yeah. period piece, correct? Yes, it is. Yeah. That that was my problem with the ending is because I was I was pretty wrapped up in this movie. I mean, I was really wrapped up. Rachel Weisz and um, Emma Stone. Oh, I haven't seen her in a long time. She's been she's done like, three Weiss. movies this, this really? year. Really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and she crushes it in this movie. She's so good, and the it, the kind of back and forth that the two of them have. And with s- Olivia Coleman, correct? Olivia Coleman is is plays the queen, and she's she is um, she's about she, to be the queen in Crown season three too. Yes, queen. Yes, and she's also getting a lot of um, yes. she's getting a lot of uh, a notice for this role oh, yeah. as she should, and it's their dynamic. You mean buzz award buzz? Yeah, and I tell you who also who was great and is not getting enough buzz was Nicholas Holt. Mm. Huh. He was incredible in this movie. He was so good in this movie. But I was loving the movie. I was loving it. I wanted to see where it was going to I had this whole idea of what I think thought was going to happen, how they were going to play it towards the end. And then it just ends. Did the <laughs> ending ruin the movie for you? It didn't ruin it, but it certainly diminished how I was I was ready to rave and say, I should have this movie should have been in my top five. It certainly didn't make my top ten because of the ending. Wow. Yeah, because right. I just didn't like the ending. And my wife and I were like, no, 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 this can't be the ending because we were so locked up in it. We were so locked up. It's a really good movie. I just didn't like the end. But I seem to be one of the few people that, that didn't like the end. Speaking of your top ten. Yes. Both you and Marks. Yeah. I've got a bone to pick. With oh, here, oh, here we go. Why, we didn't have the Predator in there? Uh, no. <laughs> that should be on everyone's list. Riley's or Ellis's? Uh, uh, Mark no, Ellis. Ellis. Okay. Uh, neither of you, spoiler yes. alert, had Mission Impossible Fallout. I like the movie. What's up with that? Like the movie? No, and the show. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> the show. I know. I listen. I like. I like the movie. Um, I, I just. It's, I like the last Mission Impossible better. 
If Fallout had come out in September, October, November, yeah. would you have had it in your top ten? You think? Mm, it's the same movie. No, I know, but yeah. maybe fresher in your fresh in the brain. No, I watched. I watched it. I watched it recently with, oh. you know, with my wife, and I and I th- I think it's a very good movie. It just it's not not top ten. Like I watched Vox Lux again. I watched uh, Vice, which is so, I still haven't seen it. Here's yeah. my I really want to see yeah, that. Really okay, I, for the past week. Basically, since the wife and I left Carmel, we've been trying to see Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh, and it still has been, haven't seen it? Still haven't seen it. Oh, shit. It has been sold out at the AMC Century right. City at the 645 every single night. We've tried to go for the last five nights in a row. Okay. Nothing. Same with wow. Vice. Both of those, oh, at wow. that time, both of those, we cannot well, get a seat outside the front row, and I'm not going to sit in the front row of a movie. You said at Century City, right? At Century City. Since they redid that mall, it's so ins- Century City is yes. a mall in Los Angeles, they did yeah. like the massive, massive makeover on. Right. It's impossible to go there. Really? Be- yes, because like the, the other Italy- day when I was there, um, Kim Kardashian and Kris Jenner were speaking. Uh, so like they keep doing these huge events where like people are going to the movie, they're seeing mm, these events, they're doing yeah. like m- huge things there. You're treating it like a venue. So yeah. well, because movies so, are selling out, restaurants are totally jammed. So we went uh, the day on, on the 26th of or on 27th of December. Uh, you know that period of what you call it crimbo limbo, mm-hmm. where yeah. you don't, don't know what day it is. Oh, yep. yeah. you don't know what day it is in between like Christmas and New Year's. Yeah. Crimbo, I love limbo. It. Yeah. crimbo limbo. I had no idea what, the, what day it was this morning. Right, uh, Monday or Tuesday, I couldn't remember. It's so Wednesday. Wednesday. So we <laughs> we wanted to go see Bohemian Rhapsody. And we're like, it's been out for six weeks. Yeah, it won't be sold out. So we went to this place called Javier's, which is a Mexican place over there. It's in that where the old Pink Taco used to be oh. in Century City. Oh, oh is that it's good? so funny that you said yeah. that because it's, my, re- it's really expensive. We but it's had this conversation yesterday, and my wife was like, "What's this?" Javier's place. Yeah. It's good. It's high-end Mexican. It's, it's really, really good. good. Yeah. Okay. But I love Pink Taco. Me too. But there's the one on Sunset. And that's yeah. where it is yeah. now? Yeah. It's the, it's where the Pink Taco is. Oh, it's right. So right near the CPK. Yeah. Yeah. We should it's, go. it's Pink Let's Taco, it. but, yeah. but gourmet. Like, it's gourmet uh, Mexican food. It. It's I'm fantastic. Down. Javier's. So yeah. we sit down at Javier's. We're in, like, one of those bar tables. And, you know, the classic white guy thing to say. is like, whoa, we really beat the rush because then a bunch of people came in after. <laughs> so uh, we sit down. We both ordered something. And the waiter comes over. He lays my plate down and knocks my entire ice water on oh, me. No. And it was freezing and windy oh, that day. Did you get I mad at him? Did you get any applause? I didn't, no, I didn't get mad at him. He's like, oh, my God. I just dropped it on you. And he looks down. He's like, oh, my God. And he runs and gets towels. The whole thing went down. Ice was in my shoe. My so, pants are soaked. It's not they, warm outside. They bring me a towel, and they're like, yeah, yeah, we'll take care of your drinks. So I was like, oh. my drinks? Uh. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that was a nice tea. I was like, that's $3. Oh, I'm sorry. It's like a $34 salad. Um, but they were they were actually really great about it. But now I'm soaking wet. We leave. I'm freezing. We get to the theater. Bohemian Rhapsody sold out. We didn't even look to get tickets before. Oh, we're like, man. there's no way it's sold out. Right. It's six, It's a 6.45 on December 27th. Sold out. Sold out. None of the other movies were going. Uh, the guy wouldn't let us go in to validate our parking because we didn't get movie tickets. Turd. Yeah. Wow. Hey, bring, bring up, just guys, bring a, up box office real quick. It was just a terrible... So then the next four nights in a row... Every single Wait, time. So did you not go to the movies, or did you just not go to Bohemian Rhapsody? Was it? Didn't go to the didn't do either one. Yeah, that's oh, all well, you did go to the movies once. I did. And well, what so happened? Boy. My my in laws are awesome. It's uh, like they're a fantastic people, and they love to see movies. Like my mother in law and father in law would go, probably go to two or three movies a week. Mine like, they love too. it. <laughs> oh yeah. So we I went to see Spider Man into the Spider Verse, which was good. I mean, I get that you guys freaked out for it because yeah, love it. It's, it's not your cup of tea. It's not my cup of tea. Right. Yeah. Uh, I would love to see a Miles, Morale, Miles Morales live action Spider Man yeah, yeah. for sure. I'd right. love to. You like the story, but the animation, who cares? Yeah, for yeah. you. I like the story. And I thought the Spider Pig was hysterical. John uh, Mulaney is a Spider Pig. So and what about Nicolas Cage? Nick, oh, dude, the Spider, Nicolas, Nicolas Spider Cage Noir. Is the best. Yeah. I tweeted out after watching that movie, I, want, I miss Nicolas Cage. Like, I miss a melodramatic Nicolas Cage performance. Yeah. I really yeah. do. My favorite line in that, and this is at this point, so if you haven't seen it, turn it off. Yeah. Um, my favorite line is when he goes, we don't pick the ballroom. We just dance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Such a great line. So good. Oh, it's he so good. So I'm going to steal that. Yeah. Oh, I love that so much. Uh, we And then uh, on Christmas Day, I was like, the whole family agreed because my mother-in-law laughed at the trailer. Right. Let's go see Holmes, Holmes and Watson, Watson which what, you loved. What did you, I tell you? You guys. loved it. You loved that trailer. So, yeah, so what are you talking about? You love that trailer. You're the only one in the room. This thing crap the bed. I yeah. can't okay. believe how bad. Literal worst trailer. Father-in-law. 
after 10 minutes, he leaves and goes to see Aquaman Done. again. He just walks out. Was it a lot of shit jokes? There, uh, it's just what he was like, eh, this isn't going to be for me. Did yeah. he even really well, like Aquaman that much? Or just he liked it? Aquaman, okay. but it was at the same time, so he knew he'd so he's out. it. So he's out. So he's the first one. I just, how many people? Set, set, set the room. How it's, many people? It's me, Amanda, yeah. my father-in-law, my mother-in-law, my sister. All right, so five of us. Five of us. So Christmas Day movie. One little duck out the door. Gone. All right. Ten minutes in. 30 minutes in, Amanda and her mom are like, we're going to go see the end of Mary Poppins. And they left. Yeah, I'm going to have two ducks. Now, I'm, I'm sitting Have there. they already seen Mary I Poppins? I legitimately, they'd already seen Mary Poppins. So it's just you and Amanda left. No, just me and her, and sister. her sister. That's it. Isabel. Um, we're sitting there at the hour. She's like, I'll come and go meet them in Mary Poppins. She left. I stayed for the that whole, whole time. Movie. Holmes and Watson walked the rest of the room. I've never left a movie in my life. But Holmes and Watson walked the rest of the room. I... The they people walk. were leaving. Not just your family. Not just my wow. family. Wow. So four, yes. movie cost forty. But look, it already made twenty million, <laughs> twenty three million, and a forty two million. And what you just said, it shouldn't have made five dollars. It was. That's pretty, pretty, that's I pretty love, high for a, in a, love Will Ferrell. Just love John Cena. Huh? You guys did this to this yourselves. Really bad. You did it to yourselves. Yeah, you're right. you She's not the wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You, I, I like the trailer. I surrender to the fact that I made a mistake, Christian. I made a mistake. You made a mistake. All right. Let's let's go back though. I want to see. So look at the the overall box office though. Roxy was right twice here because the first time she was right was with Holmes and Watson because that was a total turd on wheels yeah. apparently. But we went into we were going to talk about which movies the, the the four that are actually one two three and four which we thought were Spider Verse, Mary Poppins, Aquaman, and Bumblebee. But in which order, uh, Roxy Roxy nailed it. Uh, Aquaman crushed. It's already made one hundred eighty nine wow. million. It is uh, fit just fifty two over this weekend. Um, I don't know. There are some people Gosh. saying that Mary Poppins bombed. It, it, it did not bomb. It made a hundred million dollars uh, overall. It probably cost. I mean, if you look worldwide, Mary Poppins I think is like one hundred and sixty, but it is getting crushed by Aquaman. Yeah. I mean, Aquaman yeah. is, is the Aquaman's clear, clear winner. It, I, it is. It is. I have yet to see Aquaman. So Aquaman. Um, that's Jason Aquaman. That's wow. going to come in. All right. So Mary Poppins made one hundred eighty four worldwide. So uh, the, the, yeah. in no way is a bombing. That is the, the silly, silly conversation. That anyone would say bombing, what, but Aquaman is. Clearly, a, a juggernaut. Head and shoulders. Despite yeah. the fact that I liked Aquaman and really didn't <laughs> like Mary Poppins, I think this box office has nothing to do with the quality of either movie. No, it's what people I, wanted yeah, to see. It, yeah, it's yeah. Just, it had to do with people having their minds made up prior to these. Look, movies. man, Aquaman has almost made a billion dollars. Yeah. seven hundred and fifty-one yeah. million dollars. Right, that is it's a going bono, to make a billion. Yeah. It's a bona fide By hit. By this yeah. weekend, they're yeah. saying that is a hit. And that is a huge it's hit above all. Of it's a do big win. Think do we think it's the Momoa factor? Do we think it's just a? Oh, I think it's. I think that it was marketed well. I really think that, well. I think that it is. It has a very positive director um, at the helm. It's got someone who has success in the past. Um, Do it, you think it's because people aren't exactly coming out and saying it's bad? Well, no. Look, <clears throat> a lot the, of people are saying it's good. A, right, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. Because yeah. it aimed for the fan base, and the fan base responded. The fan base. Loves the movie. Loves okay. And the, the technology. Yeah. It's all about the avatar thing. You don't want to be the person who hasn't seen this technology. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it, look, it, it's made a lot of money. It is a huge bona fide hit, and it is going to spawn um, many sequels. Whether it's sequel, whether it's they, – they have two big – Positive hits here on their hands with Wonder Woman and Aquaman yeah. because you know that's our I, Justice I, League right there. They're leading Justice League. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, because Batman v Superman, I think made a lot, made also made a lot of money um, worldwide. It did, but I think within it, the, the and a lot of the fan base liked that movie, but not the same way that they're embracing Aquaman. So I think that Aquaman is, and he's even made more money than than Wonder Woman at this point, right? Question. Mm. Yeah, I think. So. I don't what, know. What I mean, did Wonder Woman do worldwide? I think eight. Yeah, it did. It, it, it eight. about eight hundred million. And a little eight. more than that, yeah. I think. So let me ask you this yeah. question: Nine does Keep Justice close. League no, is, I think eight. is Justice League a better movie if they wait until after Aquaman to do something a little bit different, or do you think it's still the same movie? You mean a second Justice League, or you no, mean the like first? No, like the first League? one. If they waited till after Aquaman, if to you mean do... to make it or or release it the same way it is. I, no, I think like yeah. if you think should, should they have waited? Yeah. Yes, they should have waited. Okay, because because the Aquaman, tone is more consistent. Justice League yeah. to Aquaman, and that's it, I th I felt like because yeah. then when you think about Batman v Superman and Man of Steel and even Wonder Woman, the tone is completely different. Yeah, right? I don't so even think they should have had a BBS. Are, I, I don't even think that should have been before. Aquaman. Well, they, I mean, they, I, we've never yeah. found a stand. We haven't had another standalone Batman movie. Right. Their standalone movies are working. Cool. Um, Man of Steel. I know that you have your grievances with. It. I love Man of Steel. I love and Man I, Most people do. And I think that, that movie. 
Yeah. Yeah. Most people love I Man of Steel. I think, I think it's really turned. I think a lot of people turned on it. Yeah. Um, I've, I've loved it um, since it came out. Ugh. Man of Steel to me is... They're great parts I still like movie. it the best out of the three. The but beginning of same. Man of Steel. But, three. but to go to your point, Man of Steel, Wonder Woman, and Aquaman... It's your favorite of those three? Man of Steel is, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like, I, I like Man of Steel a lot. And then More I than put, Wonder Woman? I think Wonder Woman is a is a... I think that if you rank them all, seven eighths Woman's of an t- awesome movie. I just because I just don't like the ending. Yeah. Again, I'm very. I think that overall the tone works a bit more than Man of Steel for sure, and I can acknowledge that. But it's a preference thing. Preference wise, Superman's my favorite, yeah. and so I would put he's my favorite superhero out of anyone. Um, and so I would put Aquaman, and uh, out of the three, but it doesn't matter. The point is that all three of these standalone movies have worked. Mm-hmm. So I think that it would have behooved them to do those first. Yeah. You do Aquaman, you do Wonder Woman, you do Man of Steel, because all three of those worked. Phase and, one. And then you go into, then you, I think they jumped too fast into those other ones mm-hmm. because they've clearly shown that the other ones, the standalones, when they do them, they're working. And how about doing a Batman movie when we had Affleck? Yeah. How about that? Agreed. Yeah. Um, how about a standalone Batman movie? But you no? look at what Reeves, well, I don't know, I want to see what it's Reeves, tough to come I want to see what Reeves does. Reeves does. I want to see what Reeves does. I'm a big Matt Reeves fan. So I, I honestly you. think, I, I honestly think, and I'm, I'm not sure if we've ever talked about this, but those movies, Batman v Superman and Justice League, I think would have been so much better served if Christian Bale was the Batman. Mm. We already knew who we, we already knew the Batman. Yeah, we they saw were, well, I think the problem was what, because that was a big conversation Remember back when yeah. we were doing Schmoes. The, the problem with that was that Nolan set his whole universe in the real. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. there wasn't a lot of there wasn't no supernatural stuff happening. Right. And this version of what they're doing with the DC universe, it can't. It, you have to have the supernatural, and you have to all this. Now, could they have found a way to do it? Yeah, I'm sure they could have. Sure. Mm-hmm. I just but, can't see like Aquaman existing in the world of Christian Bale Batman. Right. It's like right, that, it, in, that, in that, my yeah, mind would be either. blown. But in, a, it's a different in the worst world. way, it's like yeah. Atlant, not a different sure, world, but, but a different I, part. A yes. different part, but it, yeah. it, it's 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 a different universe. Even Man of Steel, though. I mean, I love the idea that theory when Superman's in the water and the whales go by that Aquaman sent them to him. I love that. But I I can't see the Aquaman world even existing in that Man of Steel world because right. of Snyder's vision at that point. But he do, but it does. Yeah. But theoretically that Theori- is theoretically I'm I, I had trouble with the tone. Yeah. The tone Interesting. was a complete I'll, 180 in my I opinion. I tell you though that the movie I think that did the most disappointing box office yeah. for considering that it is clearly the best out of um the franchise is Bumblebee. I'm so bummed. I love that movie. Bumblebee. Did you see? I you saw, saw it. Yeah, we saw it the other night. Bumblebee, Me too. I think, I mean, suffers from people not wanting to see it because they, they other, go because another they go Transformers. Transformers. Yeah, they go. No, they, I can't yeah. do it anymore, and it sucks because I think they're going to yeah. look at this movie and go, "That was a, a risk for us to go away from the Transformers, go a little bit more intimate." You know, it's, set it in the eighties. It's easily the best. It, it is. Bar none. And I feel like Paramount's going to look at this now and go, "We're going to have to reboot the whole well, thing." Well, I don't know. Worldwide, I mean, one hundred fifty-seven million. So well, that's good. I kind of don't think that's what happened, guys. What do you think? I think the exact opposite is what happened. First of all, the Transformers movies made tons of sure. money. Last one dropped tremendously, but still made, made tons of money. Well, it made five hundred million less than the, yeah, it, than it, the it, fourth it, it, one. It took a big dip. Really? That's, yeah, yeah. That's, that's why they that's why they rebooted. I, it was I taking don't a big think people hit. knew this was a Transformers movie. I it had title tons fatigue. It had title. of people were saying, this movie's called Bumblebee. Yeah. If you know the Transformers, you obviously know it's a right. Transformers movie, but I think that taking it away from the brand, instead of trying to revamp this brand, saying this is the Transformers movie, and having everybody walk out saying, the new Transformers movie's amazing, I think that they really hurt themselves by calling it Bumblebee. It should have been called Transformers, Transformers Bumblebee. But, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I don't disagree with you there. Yeah, it's it, then, because they maybe relied on it too much for people just thinking, thinking that, that it was. That, yeah, and right. then also right. I think they kind of buried Cena. Like, the, well, they should have. He was terrible in the movie. Well, I'm not yeah. saying that he. I'm he not saying that he me, was yeah. good or bad, but I'm just saying that he has a, a core audience that I don't think showed up to this necessarily. Yeah, I mean, it's it's again, this is not a bomb. Make good points. But it's 157 million worldwide. It deserves it deserves to do better. I mean, uh, the uh, Spider Verse did 100 mil, which I think is which yeah, is great. Good. It's a, and how much did that do worldwide? Because that's uh, to me that that movie is another one quality wise. That did make my top. Uh, 213 million. It's pretty so good. It made your top 10? Yeah, 109. Yeah. Uh, pretty high up, too. Speaking of top 10, I watched 
like pieces of a, I mean I've seen the movie all the way through a couple times but pieces of it because it was on HBO a lot over the break is Blockers oh yeah so so great. John Cena you know, in that movie John Cena's good in that one he's so yeah. fun that movie is so funny yeah. that is a throwback to American Pie type movies yeah, right. yeah. it was yeah, yeah I said it was American awesome. Pie meets uh, what the hell did I call it inside of when I because I interviewed Adventures the director and Babies in it Kate Cannon no. She came yeah. in for, uh, and then I did the thing here with her with uh, Wendy. All right, Lady. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it yeah, was so she, fun. She's she awesome. was great. I loved. I loved she, that she interview. She's a good friend with Roca. Yeah, yeah they're friends. Is. Yeah, I loved uh, that interview, and I actually lo- I really enjoyed Blockers very much. So yeah. um, another thing that I saw over the break, talk about comedies. I watched Adam Sandler's Netflix special because you look I need at to watch this. because you this is a, again guilty by. What have you done for me lately? Right. A lot of his Netflix movies have not yeah, been great. A lot of his theatrical movies have not been great. So, and he hasn't been on stage in so long. Isn't it one of his comedy albums? I know so, I'm in the minority, but I I love you, man. Is that not? It's not it. That's not what, him. What's uh, my best friend's boy? My boy. What's that's my boy. That's I my got boy. there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that, that movie. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I, I turned to my wife and she was like, let's watch. We want to watch some comedies, right? Because we were watching all this. Because I did watch, and I, and I talked about that too. Um, uh, if Beale Street Could Talk, great oh, movie. I see that. Not necessarily a comedy. Um, right. So, you know, it's, it's, it, it has some, uh, some deep moments in it. And we just watched that. So she's like, I want to watch something funny. And I was like, I hear the Adam Sandler thing's good. And we're both like, really? All right, let's try it. It is lighthearted. It is yeah. funny. It is creative. Right. And he, it is also what he does. He, and I was telling Josh this because Josh said he saw him working out some of this stuff in the clubs. He, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but Comedy what, store, and, Danny's the typewriter. Yeah. And this is what Improv. he does throughout the this entire special. And I thought this was going to get old, but it, it doesn't. He, You see him, let's say he's telling one particular joke. And for the first couple sentences, he's talking and he's in one outfit and he's in, let's say, the comedy cellar in New York, right? And he's going through it and he's, and he's telling the joke. And then it cuts, and he's in front of thousands upon thousands of people in a big venue in the same joke as he's telling it. But it, it pieces together all of these this journey he went through, developing this set to the big, to the small, to the small theaters, huh. telling all these jokes. He tells a whole bunch of songs. He sings a great tribute to Chris Farley that is heartbreak, heartbreaking. He did that at the one show I was at. It, I've cried. Yeah, man. Yeah. And um, it, he, you forget. What, he's one of the most likable people in the business, and I've always rooted for him. I've not liked his movies all the time, but I've always rooted for him. And I said to, and because when he, I forget whoever directed it, and then Rob Snyder comes out. Schneider yeah. comes out at one point, and I said to my wife, "Is like he always takes care of his friends. Always. He's been for a second, yeah. and it was that thing." People asked, you know, when I was when we were doing schmoes back yeah. in the days, like you surround yourself as fun. You made it ask me too, just working with your friends, like, and it, it's it's that model that he set up, mm-hmm. like during Waterboy and and Happy Gilmore. He takes care of his friends, and he's always around his friends, and he's and he's he's working with the people that are good workers were working with his friends. Um, but the special, the comedy, there's some good stuff. There's some stuff that where he relies on the poop humor and stuff too, and yeah. it's like, all right, come on, let's let's move it on. But there's some good stuff. I, I mean, I Adam Sandler move that Billy Madison and Happy Gilmore kind of like shaped my comedy life as a yeah. young person, right? Um, so he's always Not been. Boy? I do like Waterboy a lot. The foosball. Um, yeah, I mean, Waterboy's, Waterboy's fun. amazing. I even enjoy Little Nicky, Mr. Deeds, oh, Big can't Daddy. Do Nicky. All great, all great yeah. movies in my opinion. Me too. Um, Love them. Little Nicky, great, great. Yeah, yeah. Little I Nicky really is like that. Little Nicky. Loose term for that movie. Dude, that's super. No, it's really super like underrated. Me too. That was yeah. the first one to show a, a chink in the armor, I think. Friend. Yeah, that was the first one for me. See, yeah, where I was like, totally uh, armor on fleek. But here's a. I, no, I listen. I loved Adam Sandler. I've, I've been lucky enough to see him like randomly when I've been at clubs before, and he you know he pops in, which is so cool. But the coolest thing that ever happened with me and Adam Sandler was you know Diddy Reese in Westwood, the, yeah. the yeah. dessert place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a place. cookie really place good. that most UCLA kids go to. And the yeah. line at, at Diddy Reese oh, is always long. Crazy, it's always yeah. like twenty or thirty people, right? Three so, hours. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> three. <laughs> okay, yeah, right. yeah, sure. Uh, so I'm in line at Diddy Reese when I, when I first moved to LA, and. Um, I'm in line and Sandler comes walking out, right? And he's with his kids and his wife. And I was like, holy shit, it's Sandler. And we get to the thing and I order my thing and, and the woman's like, yeah, it's free tonight. And I was like, what? And he's like, wow. Adam Sandler just paid for everybody in line. He just that's laid awesome. down a bunch of money and was like, here, pay for everybody that's here. That's and I was awesome. like, that's cool. That, that is, is really, so really, really cool. You can't argue with cool people. I know. That's yeah. a really yeah. cool move. That's so yeah. cool. That's the thing is yeah. that people, you never hear a bad thing about him. You always you root no. for him. And you root for him in this special because there's some, and, and there's a song. My, my wife, she looks at me immediately because this is me. He leaves the house, wallet, 
phone keys. Yeah. And he does this this whole song, Wallet Phone Keys, is how like, you know, what I forget, my wallet phone yeah. keys. And, That's me too. And, yeah, and then everything else that he's forgetting that he needs to keep putting back in yeah. there. It's like everything that I did. It was it, he yeah. it was it was really good. And I, I was happy to see it because I was worried as it first started. I'm like, I think this is A gonna get old and I don't think this is gonna be funny. But I found myself and my wife were like kind of laughing out loud a bunch of times. So and it was it was good to I root for see it. it was, you should see it. I watched a couple specials this uh, week. I watched uh your girls uh, Liza slash oh, yeah. uh It was so funny. Holy shit, she's so you funny. You didn't know about her until the show, right? I, I can't That's believe so I. Oh, well, my sister came to town, and my sister was like, "We're." She's big in the college crowd. Yeah, yeah my sister was like, "You don't know her? Are yeah. you crazy? Like, she's massive." So we watched it. Oh my god, she had me pissing myself because first of all, for for me, like she's the same person as me. Like everything she's talking about, I was like, "Yep, that's like my whole yeah. life." And then I watched Ellen DeGeneres's. It's really it's the, a new one? relatable. I, relatable. I didn't think yeah. I would like it. We watched it on Christmas Eve. It's fantastic. I saw a trailer for it today, actually, yesterday. She's great. She she's great. She was great in it. It's really challenging because I I hear just like the most negative things in the world about yeah, her um, yeah. which I, I know we've all heard and I don't have personal experience with her but um, she kind of like lets that out a little bit in the special yeah. and so I, I saw was that appreciative be, be, of that and, and she's that, like a little bitchier that was in the trailer I was like good for that yeah, yeah. In the trailer because they said it's like uh, people come up to me and want me to hold their babies and I'm like she's like this is cashmere no no yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh -huh. I like that instead of being like this all like sweet because she's all so, the time, kind, so the kind kind thing yeah is her thing, I right? like that she was just like she talks about how mother effing wealthy she is and how not relatable her life is really anymore. And and it's good. It was yeah, really yeah. good. I, I, I thought I would be bored with it Me after too. 30 minutes, but I got through it. It was good. It wasn't yeah, like I got that. through it. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, no. you know, like sometimes you're I watching was able this, to do it. Right? Yeah. Like, I, for me, just because we've been in the system, right? right? And you see so much stand up, is like one out of every 10 specials I watch on Netflix do I get through. Like, right. Sebastian, always get right, through right, it. Right, right, right. And then, like, I tried to watch that Hannah Gadsby one. I couldn't get past that one. I, I like, I knew I was not going to like the Ellen one. And then I, I, I actually enjoyed the Ellen one. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing the Santa one. But there's been the so many Santa specials I've seen. I'm like, nah, I'm done. Yeah. Nah, yeah. I'm done. She stopped nah, trying I'm to done. be likable in it. And she was just yeah. like, mm. Well, you uh -huh. said it though out there when we're talking about it too. There's so many Netflix specials now mm -hmm. that it's like, how are you going to separate yourself mm -hmm. and make. Look, Sandler leads himself in because it's Sandler, right. and you're curious because you want him to be good because of the mm -hmm. things that he's done in the past, but he switches it up by doing this kind of intercutting through all of these sets that he did, which I thought was really cool Like mm -hmm. to, to see like from the smallest club of like maybe 60 people to thousands of people. And it's like in, in and the same joke, and to see the reaction, and, and it was cut very well. So that to me, that that's why I, um, you know, watch the whole thing because mm -hmm. not only I just wanted to see how I was entertained from start to finish and it wasn't just about the jokes because he's not he, and he, he doesn't claim to be a great stand up comedian he's an entertainer he's up there singing songs and he's a good musician and he's up yeah. there singing songs he's a good and musician, he's, that's yeah. what he's doing uh, up there the majority well, the of Jewish it Jewish songs that we have right yeah. and he sings another one it's a bar mitzvah song which, yes. is, which is 65 I would say 65% of it is, is are songs yeah um, wow because that's what he does. That that's was that was his shtick. He was he was doing that before Fallon was doing it. Yeah. You know, um, Fallon took Sandler's act. A lot basically. of it. Yeah. 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 He, he, I mean, you know, an homage. He took a lot homage of it, but because he, because he, he always gave him credit. So, woman who does that yet? I could do it. What singing and dancing? Mm -hmm. All right, that, maybe that's your stand-up. Yeah, that's me. That's your <laughs> shit. Um, well, maybe we get a chance I to rap. do that on January twelfth. Yeah, if you want, because we will be. We will gonna, we're all going to be at the comedy store, guys. And oh this yeah. Is something I didn't get a chance to tell everybody before the break um, because we didn't have an official. We talked about it when we were hosting. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So January twelfth. Thanks for listening. Yeah, sorry, you're gonna. <laughs> I called in. You're gonna have to go to event. Uh, just Google this event bright and put Schmo down there. Event bright Schmo down. Um, and January twelfth, there are I believe like forty tickets just for fans left because there's gonna be over hundred and fifty of us plus you know guests and things too. So it's like a hundred. Uh, of competitors and and people who perform, we're doing the Schmodown Awards. There's, Mark Ellis will be hosting it the whole night. It is going to be at one o'clock, I believe, on um, January twelfth, which is a Saturday. 
do not drive because there's going to be a lot of day drinking. Yep. It's going to be a lot of the wild berries will be there. Mark mm-hmm. Riley will be there. You're yeah, going to yeah. be there. Damn right. Roxy will be I'm there. I'm presenting an award. You are indeed. Um, and there will be a. You are. The you wild are. berries are doing a 20 too. minute interlude of just yelling. Like last year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Perfect. And, and it's a full on show. And it's it. at the main room at the comedy store. And so let everybody know if you are in the California area, get your tickets. And I'd get them today. Make sure you do that. That also carries over to the fact Dressed that the awards themselves, if you want to vote on the awards, if you've been paying attention to Schmodown, if you go, if you are, this for the dollar tier and up on the Patreon, patreon.com slash Schmodown, if you are on any of those tiers, you can vote, but the the voting closes today. So make sure that you get your tickets, Eventbrite, just once again, go to Google and just type in Eventbrite, Schmodown, buy your tickets for January 12th, we're all going to be there, it's going to be chaos. Should I sure. campaign? I'm nominated. You are nominated. You guys are too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're nominated for Fuck best for manager. Stryer, yeah, you but, know, listen, yeah. the wild bears aren't about winning things. We're not about winning. We're yeah. not about belts. We're not, not about prizes. I'm, We're I'm about, about I voted. selling t-shirts. I yeah. voted for you though. And yelling. Yeah. You, Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. It was for what baby face, baby face team of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I did. Riley, you got nominated for a bunch of stuff. I voted I know, for, him for a bunch of stuff. He's got yeah. his own award named after him. Yeah. You got the team got, stuff for you stuff. Well, let me yeah. let me. I'm glad you brought that up because this year the Yodi Award I last year this. when we came up with lo, the Yodi Award last year, mm-hmm. it was the first one to 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 nominate mm-hmm. and to the recognize the Daniela McBride Award. The, it really the, what the, it is. Keeps on giving. Know, but right? you got to recognize you recognize <laughs> when somebody brought. Um, greatness into the league, and somebody brought a good um, overall attitude. And just things people still talk about, and there was no one more deserving this year for the Yodi Award than the big man, John Schnepp. Aww. This year is going to get the Yodi Award, and um, Holly Schnepp will be there. Oh, Holly so Schnepp, cool. I call Holly yeah. Schnepp. Yeah. Holly Payne will be there um, to accept on his behalf. Oh, I, so I wrote her. She's she was in London, but that's I wrote her, and it was. It was I, I actually I don't. I don't, I don't I'm not shy to say it. I, I teared up pretty pretty strong when um, I wrote to her and I said, I want to give the Odie Award this year to Schnapp, and I'd like you to be there to present it. And she wrote back, it would be my honor. Oh, and, that's awesome. and I would, uh, I was, I was thrilled to have it. Holly will be there. I think I'm going to have Coy and uh, and Amy if they're if if they're available. Definitely. If they do the actual speech to the, in the beginning. I'll, I'll do the the top of it, sure. you know, and then bring them up to say a couple of words. I. Uh... I have you know some of my favorite matches all time showdown right yeah. and like our first ever you know championship Good one. Oh, that yeah. kind of stuff that was so but much fun very 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 early on it might have even been like our first you know was the Finstock uh Schnepp match when oh, yeah. everybody was like, mm. Schnepp is going to mop the floor with oh, Finstock. Right, right. And Finstock won. And Schnepp walks up. He goes, I'm fucking suck at this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the first thing he said to me. I laughed so yeah. hard. It was well, used to call, the He used to call him Jim Sock. Yeah, Jim he Sock. He called him Jim Sock and, and, and he called uh, JT, JTX or yeah. something. Too. My <laughs> favorite yeah. is... What are the seven or the, the how many freaking dwarves? The seven dwarves, yeah. wherever he goes. Oh, can we yeah, bring that moment sleepy, up? It's the, la- it's the last one. Bring up Schindler versus Schnepp. Schnepp. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, it's the last question. He just yeah, bring, bring it. Have you, it's, it is. No. It's, bring, it's bring started up the strong. Yes. Last yes. Yeah. Well, Finst- he hit like one. It was like, he's like Sleepy, Schnepp, yeah. slimy, sleazy, <laughs> so, jimble you know, jamble, and fuck you. The boys, the boys are gonna bring it up. So it's the last. It's the last question. And yeah, he. They asked because that we changed. It was actually after Clark Wolf and Makuga's match that we changed that rule because she yeah. had to. What rule? She had to. She, no, she had to guess all of the guardians. Yeah. Instead of like three out of the five, three yeah. out of the. She had to guess all of them and missed one. Um, let's just. Oh, I forget you were on the desk. Yeah. By betting on who can swindle. No, let's go to the I last. I be on the desk. Let's go to the last one. I, I was I thinking about go. that actually, <laughs> but I, yeah, because we don't. It's funny because we don't they don't have the questions themselves the, this before we Let's did that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is this it? I'm just going to I got to guess Paul Newman. Oh, okay. Your winner. Oh wait, it was back. Uh, it's a, it was a three-pointer? Uh, oh my god. So this is for the three-pointer. It was a three-pointer. Three <laughs> <laughs> action movie. No? No. That's not it. Maybe it was was it a two-pointer? No. no. Are you sure it was or a one song? at that? I don't know. We'll, well, whatever. We'll have to find it. But it, it, if you guys can look for it, it's it's he he. It was maybe I don't remember what match it was, but it was I'm trying it, to remember. I mean, really you know, Schnepp and, and Meyer Burnett when they were together, yeah. that was our first Wolves of Steel match, and they beat us. They did. Oh, yeah. wow. and that was a big upset at the time. But they got all the right. You know, that happens in yeah. Schnodown. But and that's yeah. what I love about Schnepp. Schnepp looked at me and he went, "Hey, yeah, well, Schnepp, <laughs> Schnepp's last, give him a big old hug." Schnepp's last match. Um, 
you know, before he unfortunately you know, passed away, was was with um, it was with Bruce Campbell. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Bruce Campbell yeah, was yeah. on the desk, and it was for the it was for the Ash vs Evil Dead thing that we did. And he and Whitney did a great little bit together. So it was a it, it anyway. It just it just made a lot of sense to give it Hell to yeah. Schnapp this year. So January twelfth, guys, if you're there. Please come and, and join us. We'll relive the great moments of, of Schnepp inside of the Schmodown, as well as honoring all the, the great players and, and everything that, that the season in general this year was, was really good. Some great memories. And there'll be, some, there'll be some upsets. There'll be some drama, I'm sure. There'll be a lot of fun. So January 12th, one more time, go to Eventbrite on uh, Google, type in Schmodown, and you can get it. What do you I, was, I was just thinking of, do I know the seven doors? I, okay, I've uh, got yeah. dopey, doc, sleepy, grumpy, happy, sneezy. Yes, yeah. yeah. sneezy. And I sleepy. can't get the, I said sleepy. Oh, yeah. sleepy. I'm missing a seven. I that's a hard doc. No, I did you doc. doc. You did doc. Happy. Grumpy. I did grumpy, sleepy, dopey, doc. Bashful. 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 Yeah. I the hard thing. When you said shit. sleazy, I was like, sleazy's one. Yeah. Uh, sleazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, all right, listen, when we get back, I think Mark Ellis is going to join us on yeah, the table. Nice. So we will be back in just a little bit. So, guys, thank you for joining us on this first show in 2019. We'll take some tweet, tweets later and some phone calls. So get it ready. Clyde a lot. No, it's not late to the party. That's actually from Obi-Wan Kenobi. You didn't know that? Well, you should, and now you do. Jedi Council, what is it? It's about Star Wars, obviously. It's Jedi Council. Every week, the latest and greatest in Star Wars movie news, myself and Ken Knapsack, that's right, the pit boss himself, we have a guest on, and we talk about everything happening in the world of Star Wars. If it's the movie news, the TV news, canon news, comic books, games, and then we take questions from you guys on Facebook and Twitter. It's a lot of fun. We've been doing it for a couple of years now. I'm still excited talking about it. The fan base is coming together again. I believe it is. I think it is. I hope it is. And we're talking Star Wars, so we like you. That's right. All of you, if you're not a fan of Star Wars, come on over and join us every Thursday for Collider Jedi Council here on Collider Video. And we have an Apple Podcast feed or Podcast One, wherever you want to go if you listen to podcasts. And not only do you get Collider Jedi Council every week on Thursday, The Rule of Two with Mark Fernandez and Mark Riley, that's on every week. I believe it drops on Wednesday. It's on one of these days. It's a good show. You should listen to it. I like it. I listen to it. I haven't listened to it once. Hey, guys. Ryan Satin here from ProWrestlingSheet.com. And if you're a pro wrestling fan, which... I hope you are, even if it's in secret, then you should be checking out Wrestling Sheet Radio Weekly. Uh, we've got a bunch of shows in the podcast feed. We've got weekly recaps for myself and John Roca, which you guys will probably know from the Collider family. Uh, that's for Raw. That's for SmackDown. We've also got the weekly roundup of wrestling news. It's a show I host called Wrestling Sheet Radio with Jamie Iovine and Elijah Bates. And we've also got a bunch of other stuff in our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet. So check it out. Subscribe. And I hope you guys dig it. Hey, everyone. Mark Ellis here. You know, when I'm not trying to clone dinosaurs or drinking in my neighborhood watering hole, I am probably hosting Collider Movie Talk. It's a flagship show here at Collider. I like to say that because I'm the host of it. It's every day, almost. It's four days a week, which is still pretty good, above 50%. You can watch it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. 4 p.m. Los Angeles time is when we do it. It's live, so you can participate in the live chat room. Go ahead and give us your thoughts on every story we have coming, because it's all the latest movie news of the day. Who did what at the box office? What horrible Redbox movies Bruce Willis signed on to? The DC, the Marvel, the Star Wars, the Lord of the Rings. Are they making new? I think they're, they're, it's a TV show, and we still might talk about it anyway, because we love movies around here. It's myself and an ex Expert panel of guests, including John Roca, Perry Nemiroff, Jeff Snyder, and other noted noters of note. You guys are going to love this show. And then we take your live Twitter questions at the end of the show at Collider Video. You can always use the hashtag Collider Movie Talk to get in touch with us. So subscribe right here to Collider Video. Check out Movie Talk and check out the Collider Movie Talk podcast feed. We have a podcast feed now. You don't have to look at this handsomeness. You can just listen to it, whether you're driving to work, whether you're driving from work, or you don't have a job, but you have a basement and ears. You can listen to Collider Movie Talks feed. You can get it at Apple Podcasts or on iTunes. You also get Mailbag. That's the show that's hosted by Perry Nemeroff a lot more professionally than I run this pirate ship. That's our weekend show where she takes your letters. I don't know if you write them or you email them. You have to ask her. And Afterthoughts, hosted by Ryan Snelling and Jay Williams. I almost said Ryan Williams and Jay Snelling. 
Would anybody have known the difference? I certainly would. I would have felt bad about it because I'm a nice person, and that's why I host Collider Movie Talk. Check it out in video form or on our podcast feed. What's up, Collider fans? If you are a fan of television and you want to watch a guy that looks like me and a guy named Thad Williams talk about TV every single Friday, subscribe to the Collider channel. Collider Podcast is where you can find the video. Uh, we have our own iTunes feed, hashtag at Collider TV Talk. You can find it on iTunes or wherever you find your podcasts and you listen to them in your ear holes. That's where Collider TV Talk comes at you. We talk about TV news. We talk about shows we love, shows that we don't love. And most importantly, we don't read any books because... Because TV has nothing to do with reading. We also have a show called Hypothetical Questions with myself and Roxy Stryer and all kinds of reviews right here at the Collider Podcast channel and the Collider TV Talk feed. Subscribe, rate, like, tell your friends, tell all your friends to tell their friends. And before you know it, it's a pyramid scheme of television. I'm Josh McCuga. You can see Thad Williams and myself along with Roxy Stryer and all the Collider personalities all the time right here on Collider TV Talk. As always, put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey everyone, I'm Scott Movie Mance, and just to let you know, if you already don't, every Friday here on Collider Video, I host a weekly film review series called Movie Review Talk. The title says it all. Every week I am joined by two guest critics of my choice, and they're never the same. We review the new films. We pick something that's streaming that you might not know about, but is really great. And we pick a Blu-ray for something that you might have missed in theaters. It is fun, it is infectious, it is the Citizen Kane of movie review shows, and it's only right here on Collider with this guy, Scott Movie Mance, Mr. Movie Release Dates himself. Check it out every Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, only on Collider Video. All right, we're back. And man, we just like, it's a total, total uh, change of the team, I guess. Everybody got exhausted. We had to tag out. And we the got a brand new team. starters have the arrived. starters have arrived. With these two gentlemen. Look at this. So, so what, what a crew. Creed um, 2. Some sexy music that plays when we come in, too. It's the truth. This is Ron Am I right? Is it Creed 2? <laughs> is this Creed 2? But this it, is Black Klansman. Oh, Black Klansman. that's yeah. what it was. Not Crap. very sexy either. <laughs> that was in my top oh, ten. I remember yeah. my top ten too. Crap. Old January. Well. It is January. It is 2019. And is it? It is. Mm-hmm. Welcome back, buddy. Nice to have you. Good Mark be, Ellis is here. Good to be back. Nice to see you. Doing stuff again. It's going to be a slow ramp up to, yeah. to my, my normal working capacity. I'm this sure. Year. Yeah, you look I'm rough. Feeling like a, feeling like a March yeah, what happened? target did you date. Out, did you out last night? No, we were recovering from. Thank the, you. were at the comedy store. I on New Year's. That's what I mean. Yeah. Probably, probably that was probably rough in general. No? <laughs> I did. I did nothing yesterday. Nothing. I, I literally. I don't know that I've ever done less activity in my entire life than what I did for about a week when I went home to Virginia. Just chilled out with the family. I literally did. The only time I got off the couch was to play Wii golf. Oh, and that's like nine holes at a it's time. A little bit of exercise, I guess. Oh, very, very little, little bit, and then you got to relax and think about what you did. Right. You know what your your round was like. So that was really it. And then I came back here, and it was as soon as I walked in to Collider, it's just, it's right back to right. everybody's. All those bad all, choices just come and hit you right in the face. Yeah, because yeah. everybody's bustling around. I'm like, well, oh, why, did, why did I even come in today? Right. And then the first person to come and attack me is a young man named Christian Rubel Cobb. Oh, and that means. He just said, the first, his greeting, his welcome to 2019 was, oh, I got a bone to pick with you. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, the, fuck, did, the did Mission somebody Impossible not pay thing? You? Yeah, yeah he, did he, it on, he did it on air, too. Did he really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He made me. He, made me, he, he tried he, to make me feel bad. He, oh, I was trying to guess what movie. Right. He, he was so well, I mad. Said, that's why I said to him. I said, what, The Predator? I thought it was Halloween. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be no. Predator. Look, but. he's not wrong. Mission Impossible is a really good movie. Yeah. But I just, it wasn't enough to crack the top ten for Yeah, me. yeah, yeah, yeah. This wasn't it. Yeah. Um, you I guys hyped that movie hard when it came out, though. Mission Impossible? Yeah. I didn't. I said I, it was everyone good. else near this office really pumped it, on it. It's a really good movie. People love it. I think it's my third. But you know what? I watched Mission Impossible 3. You on like the plane three? coming back here, yeah. I had never seen it start to finish. Oh, really? No, and it is great. It, it rebooted that whole franchise. It really did. So yeah. that might be my second favorite. After uh, nothing's going to top Ghost Protocol, unless That's, the guy want, unless they build a, a building higher is Ghost than Ghost Protocol Four. Yeah, See, I liked Five. Rogue, Rogue Nation. Yeah, Rogue Nation is really good too. 
But I wanted to also, I wanted to bring in from Pro Wrestling Sheet, um, Ryan Satin is here. What's up, man? How was your vacation? Uh, it was good. Yeah, I had a yeah. similar, I, I, mine was a little different. I was excited to come back to work. I was all like pumped. Like, yeah, yeah, I haven't seen everyone in a week. Yeah, but and you're I, such a naturally positive guy. <laughs> you know, it's you're not, tough you to deal with you with would say that about me. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm trying to be more you positive. Right. So I like hearing a, that. You don't need to, trust me, don't try any harder. You're doing great. You always have a smile on your face. You always, you're, you're always engaging in conversation. I Chris is not going to tell you that you look like shit. <laughs> no. no, I don't know him that well. Um, <laughs> but, I can't, but you're thinking it. But I no, can't. Not but you're thinking it. No, I, I can't. You can look at that beard. I, uh, it's amazing. It's, beard. it's coming in nicely. He's yeah. a pretty stunning man. Beard. Beard. So Sam, what would you do? But I, but I came in and I was all excited because I want. I binge watched Black Mirror this this mm. holiday because I have I hadn't watched the series at all and I, I I watched the first episode like a year ago and I didn't understand the hype because I didn't like that pig episode. Yeah, yeah. But then I was like, everyone still talks about it. And so I went back and I, I love binged it. watched. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. So many good episodes. It's so good. I've never the seen not a one. one. You haven't seen any of them? Not me. Not a one. Neither of you? you oh, I've seen everyone. Everyone. Yeah. Like the most Neither recent one. season was unbelievable. So good. Like the best yeah. of the show. It's like, so the, far, new, it's like the new Twilight Zone, right? It's Very like, much yeah, so. Yeah. If you haven't watched them, I, I can't recommend it oh, enough. I'm sure I like. You have to watch all of them. No, you yeah, literally okay. can just watch like at, at one every once like, in a while. I'll give you five that you should hence, watch. Hence the Twilight Zone aspect. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying okay, to think like of, of what we started on because I started on the pig episode and I happened that might still be my favorite one. Really? I thought it was great. Yeah, See, but, that one turned me off. I, I was like, I, I like the more tech based ones that they've done. The one, I'm thinking that we start him on the one that uh, Toby Kebbell is in, and it's like, like Toby th- Kebbell. There's like a recording device in your in your contact, and it records all your memories, and then they no. can become back that's I, right up my that, alley. I just watched that one last night right yeah I think you would dig that's that one. Now, I, like I haven't that seen one. this yeah. uh, I haven't seen this bander snoot thing bander yeah. snatch yeah, yeah. yeah. close enough it's an interesting concept that's mainly why I wanted to see black mirror so I was like well I'm, uh, I should probably yeah. like get back into because I watched bander snatch it was interesting so then it got me into the other ones I think he would like uh nosedive the one that's about one's social one's media because he hates social media uh, so much yeah. I think the one where like it's, it's it's about like society basically rates you social media that's style, uh, Bryce Dallas Howard yeah yeah you like her too I do yeah, yeah, she's okay. the main character of that one. It's yeah. a really good episode. Right. So Why not the I, Star Trek you won? Not big Star Trek. That's a you are a Star Trek no. guy? Not you like Star Wars though. I think yeah. you'd like it. Right. I think you'd it's, like it. It's not actual Star Trek though. It's like uh, that's how I'm describing it. What's but it that is it's USS yes, whatever. Something. Whatever it is. Yeah. Right. But yeah. I was all excited to talk about it with people, like movie people, and I sit down and I start talking about Drew who recently started here. And Frosty was just like, No talking, we're working and got what? mad at me. <laughs> you gotta come on air to have a conversation. Wait, what? So I was like so happy. <laughs> Oh, well, at least I can come in here and talk about it. it was wow! So he yelled at, see, look, I've been yelling ten that, minutes. I hadn't seen this movie for a week. He, Frosty, ju- Frosty <laughs> just put, you know, Frosty just put down. You know what? Can, uh, no, 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 no! I, I don't want to. I want to bring him in. Comster, bring him, bring him into no. the other room. Oh, we're bringing him in. Bring Frosty him in. Not, not in here though. Bring him in your room. Cat. I don't want him in here. Bring him, in, bring wow. him in your room. He's such a I, wild I, cat. I, I gotta have that conversation oh, no. with him. I gotta have that conversation <laughs> with him. You <laughs> I mean you said it on air, so he's gonna hear it eventually. You gotta know. I, I gotta hear why. What is your goal? Do you want to know why he doesn't want talking? I think it was because he didn't want to have anything spoiled for him. That's what I'm going with. Some of the episodes. Okay. But he definitely said. Go write stuff about Mean Gene Okerlund and stop talking about <laughs> Black Mirror. Yeah. And I said, okay, and right. I have my headphones on. All right, see, that, that, that's what I, if, if it's a spoiling case, I'm I mean, guessing it's I a spoiling I wasn't trying thing. to spoil right. anything, I swear. But if Can I be honest? Yeah. I don't think it's that bad for somebody to ask you to do your job. No, <laughs> he's not really my boss. <laughs> he's not. Yeah, he's not. He's not his boss. Yeah, but still. No, but look, he doesn't this, know my job. I, look, the, no, this, this it's not to, that. He this knows This to that. me, but this to me cements the whole thing when Jay Williams came in here and said it was like a morgue. It's like you should be able to be able to talk to people in the um, office. Uh, uh, okay, here's what? the thing: if you're talking <laughs> These people about people do their work, if you're talking about something very recent in yeah. entertainment. Then this office has a history of, of loud stuff. conversations, yeah. and I love Ryan. And I'm Dad. very loud. He has a little <laughs> bit of a loud voice. I, I'm as very do loud. I. Well, you guys, I, I mean, to see you guys in a library would be incredible. <laughs> We, I mean, Ryan it, and I should go on tour, but we don't do we don't do concerts. We do banks. Yeah. We walk into banks and we just disturb the crap yeah. out of people trying just to deposit con- their you, stuff. Tr- getting you guys on a conversation that you get really passionate about, and like the, I see how many people you'd walk. Hey, can you imagine yeah. if I was a wrestling fan? How loud the oh office would be oh, if God. we Is, were. Do we have him? Yeah. All right, Fro- Frosty, you you're here. How are you? I'm do- I'm doing well. How are you doing? How was your break? Uh, it was okay. Hmm. Or, how was yours? It was it was <laughs> terrible. All right, so oh yeah, you, you you had some sick kids or something. Yeah, I was that. I had to. Stay. I was supposed to go to New York. No, I'm kidding. It, it was it was fine. I spent a lot of time with my family. But look, here here's the here's the thing I wanted to tell you. So 
Let me ask you: do, do, Are you are you a fan of the the Black Mirror series? <laughs> Am I a fan of the? Bla- oh, you're already starting in on this. I'm just no, asking. A, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just. I'm just asking. I'm just asking a question. Are you a fan of the series? I I have not seen all the episodes, but I've seen a few of them, and the ones I've seen, I enjoy. Okay, so let me ask you because I know you, so I want to know that if. So when you when you instructed the people around you to to be quiet <laughs> and to work. Was that was that because you didn't want to get spoiled, or because yes. you wanted them to work? I don't give a shit about the work. Oh, okay. I mean, they can talk about anything else. I just okay. don't. I, I, there is a a risk of me getting keep, spoiled. Yeah, there's a few key episodes that have just okay. been, uh, it, you know, in the queue waiting to watch. Okay, uh, I'm, uh, not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not mad at you. you. Although if, if, if you can I say may. stop talking and go write about Mean Gene, but I understand. I get Wait, it. that was that was basically you just saying sh- shut up and stop spoiling things. <laughs> well, that's my question. Yeah. I want to know the tone of the <laughs> no. shut up and start yeah. working. I want to know <laughs> how did you say it? How did you say it? Goddamn mouth <laughs> and get back to work. You loud bastard. Backhanded me. No. I mean, you know what's funny? Wrestle boy. Listen, yeah. wrestle boy. because he, he sits right behind me, and Vinny's right behind me, and right. they talk about this dumbass wrestling. Nice. All, no, I'm kidding. They, they talk <laughs> about wrestling a lot, and for that stuff, I actually don't care. But when you're talking about movies, and the other thing is that, it, you know, someone who is sitting near you maybe has a carrying voice, and there's a lot of spo- <laughs> like you know, the, not everyone in the office has seen uh, right. the, the recent fair, episode. Fair. So I'm always trying to watch out for spoilers. But I get know, it. I get it. Sorry, I, you, just, you weren't being a prick. I get and it. And I wasn't oh, calling you out. I just mentioned. No, no, no. He just mentioned Black Mirror on here. And I, s- I said I got to get to the bottom of this. So that was, that was the only reason. To, okay, yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm with you on this. I think that the again because I know you. That's why I brought you and here. And Roxy, you were already on Team Frosty. You were on the team at the beginning. Either way. No, I'm not on Team Frosty. <laughs> <laughs> I, I now was, you know that it's not about the yeah, work? I was on Team Frosty if Frosty was like, hey, man, you know, you're getting paid to be here. You should do your job. But I'm not on Oh, you wanted Frosty to be Yeah, more. she wanted him yeah. to be a dick. Yeah, she likes authority. You authority. want him to be a jackass. It's, I don't want him. That's not a jackass. Since when is asking somebody to do their work that they're getting paid to do being a jackass? It's the day, like, it's the day after New Year's. Everyone's yeah. back. Like, it's like, how had, is everybody doing? Yeah. Ryan likes a, he's a nice guy. I watched over the holiday. I rewatched Scrooged, and it helped my outlook on life a little bit again where I'm trying to be less 100% combative work all no. the time like I'm trying to be nicer to the people around uh, me so you are no. the nicest it's version of though. Frank Cross Bill Murray's <laughs> yeah. character in well, Scrooge I just can you one, I just one, qu- one, one question real fast did Scrooge help it so you will not talk about wrestling 24-7 <laughs> in the office <laughs> kind of yeah <laughs> see this is what I, now, now this is where I'm going to stick up for Sad. okay um, you, 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 yeah. going, going back to to Roxy what Roxy was saying um, it is Ryan Satin's job to speak about wrestling 24/7 while he is here because yes. he because okay, we purchased we purchased a wrestling site. <laughs> yes. We have a wrestling site and we all should embrace the fact that we have a wrestling site. ProWrestlingSheet.com. ProWrestlingSheet.com <laughs> and he works on YouTube. He is working, he's got podcasts that he works and there are a lot of stories that he knows. He knows wrestling very well and that's the reason I brought him in today because Bobby Frosty. The <laughs> Thank you Frosty. Thank you Frosty. Uh, uh, Frosty, we, get back to work. Yeah, get go back, back to work. work. Why, why are you talking <laughs> I, work. Black Mirror aired a year ago. There, you can't be mad that he's spoiling it. No, that's, that's not. That's I, not I, I can definitely. I don't be, agree. With I that. can definitely be mad. Yeah, you shouldn't. You shouldn't spoil. I was it. on yeah, your I team, and now you. I'm off your team. Oh, thank you. I'm with you, Frosty. We're no longer friends. I'm out. <laughs> All right, bye, Frosty. All right, Ryan is here though because um, so for those of you who are wrestling fans or even maybe were back in the day, used to watch WWF as it used to be called. One of the greatest. Um, Post announcers or just announcers in general is today the late great Mean Gene Orkelin. Um and man, you talk about a guy that we were talking about it too outside. He helped Hogan get over more as a face than than even Hogan did himself. He was a pioneer. He was he was just there was so much great about him. And I'm gonna show, did you have you ever seen the SummerSlam clip by the way? Which one? The the There's one. There's so many. The Summer where the, where he gets when the thing falls. Oh it, yeah, it's one it's, of my favorites. It's the, I saw that live what when happened? it happened. Really. Bring up, guys, can you bring up uh, Mean Gene Orkelin SummerSlam blooper? While they're pulling that up, my, one of my favorites is it's, a, it's an interview with him and uh, Macho Man Randy Savage and Mitchell, Miss Elizabeth, which is sad because they're all three a pass now, which is such a bummer. But it's at Macho Man's Summer house. SummerSlam. SummerSlam blooper. It's at Macho Man's house. It's actually Vince McMahon's house, and they're by the pool, and he's interviewing Macho Man and Ray-Bans. Yeah, so, and so, so Mean Gene's wearing Ray-Bans, interviewing Macho Man, and it's, it's one of my favorite interviews. But it's great. This yeah. is a classic one, this, too, the way this, he pulls okay, this off. Okay, so and Ellis will love this, too, because uh, uh, go ahead and bring this, uh, this clip up. This is during. You know, the ultimate warrior. Fuck it. <laughs> Publicly stated that. 
Damn it, who put that up? Is that $200 an hour? <laughs> As a blooper, <laughs> he screams, fuck it. And then... And That's great. great. I, it was I live mean, on TV. I, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I don't have a great perspective on who Mean Gene yeah. is or was, but I do remember watching you know, one of my favorite comedians and one of my best friends, Steve Simone, yeah. talks about wrestling a lot on stage. Do you know Simone? You, mm, you would love it. Yeah. So when he talks about like watching all these old matches mean with Gene. his dad, yeah, he, he always yeah. references Mean Gene. And right. so in my head, I, I was even able to pick out because Steve is such a good storyteller that Mean Gene is is the announcer. He's kind of like the the ringmaster yeah. to a point. He's he's the Jen Sturger, the Emma Fife, right, the Roxy okay. Stryer. You okay. know, yeah, he, and, uh, and yeah. for those wondering like why we brought this up, because I don't think you mentioned this part. Uh, unfortunately, Mean Gene passed away this week. Uh, it was yeah. it was announced by WWE today um, at 76 years old that he passed. There's really no information at this point on how he passed yeah. or or the sur- you know circumstances surrounding it. But I mean, he was. As recently as November, he was at you know reunion, you know Russell yeah. Cade type stuff. Pretty active. Doing, and he's in storytellers a lot of yeah, the time. Yeah, 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 still doing stuff. So he was very active. Doesn't if he was sick or anything that doesn't seem like he was you know like suffering for very right. long or anything like that. But there hasn't been like I an official family Eugene. statement or anything like that. I at love what Eugene. at what age do people assume that it's old age? Because that's pretty young, seventy. It is still like young. At, yeah. at what age are we? Do people wait for the announcement? Well, it's different right. if you if you drink Coors Light every day, right? Then you wrong. should live to at least a hundred. Because that the guy, the, the, the guy that was 101 years old. Everybody sent me this link. This guy's 101 years old and he's still light. alive. And he that, yeah. says that he attributes his long yeah. life to Coors Light. Light. So if you drink Coors Light, <laughs> you're in a different bracket as far as old age goes than everybody else. I, and I'm happy to be in that bracket. I feel Mean Gene would have been a lot of fun to drink with on the road. Oh yeah, because he, he was a wrestler's buddy. Man. I Maybe saw. Love him, yeah. I saw someone. Um, it was Arda Orkow, who he used to work for WWE. He was in uh, worked in. Similar role as Mean Gene uh, for WWE.com, and he said that uh, after every shoot, Mean Gene would go and get a steak and and uh, vodka or whatever, and they'd hang out and drink yeah. and stuff. And that's how, he, he, from from what I've seen all across the internet, I mean, he was beloved by everybody, everyone, Not, yeah. just everyone in the industry, and I think in that watch because, like you said, uh, he helped get all these legendary names over. I mean, Big it, time. he was like, I think when you think of WWF, uh, you know, the the eighties and all that kind of stuff, even though you think of uh, you know Hulk Hogan. It was very, much more simple matches. It was like a simple concept, a simple formula. And Mean Gene was a huge part of it. It was him, Howard Finkel, like those guys. Like they added to it because wrestling back in the day played more into the sports element than it does today. Today it's more about it's a show. It is completely soap characters. It always had the soap opera element in the WWF, but back in the day. But they treated it as if it was the the, the sports event, like a big fight was going to happen. They didn't fight seven times before they got to it. It was. Randy Savage was fighting Hogan. You're not going to see that fight until WrestleMania. And who built it up? The announcers. The guys who were – it was always him and uh, – and, and, and Al uh, – Lord Alfred Hayes. Yep. It was all those guys. And and Mean Gene was was the best of them. So Do you miss that style of – of the way that the show 100% went on but would you so would you trade the way that wrestling happens today I would I know he might be differently but I would I I think wrestling suffers from and I understand for what they have to do because of advertisements and things the way that they have to have so much programming and they have to have big marquee matches to keep people excited the but the news it, cycle in social media is the big reason why you is. can't do what you used to it, do. It just takes the luster off a lot of the big fights. Like if, for example, so like when when Braun Strowman's supposed to fight Brock Lesnar, right? Which be which is actually plays into this point a little bit more because Brock Lesnar hardly ever is ever on television. Yeah. But the more you build up to it, and don't have them come up and do you can you can have them just do a couple things leading up to it, right? Be, I don't want to see any special matches with the three of them fighting, and it takes away the luster of it. When and when their announcers out there, give me their accolades. Tell me. The former two-time champion with a record of this, blah, blah, blah. Make me feel like it's a sporting event. I just feel like it's, it's, and I still enjoy watching it right now, too, but it doesn't have that same feel like it used to. Um, and that's like, you know, the purest of any sport or any or any show or anything is going to feel. But I just think that it needs to, I, I think there needs to be some drastic changes. I think their version of NXT, what they do now, they have NXT, which is more like old school wrestling yes. than what it is today. Well, absolutely. I mean, Triple H is basically trying to recreate, like, like Vince McMahon got rid of the, like, old territory style of like wrestling you know yeah. made it like a big show with like celebrities and all that kind of stuff but triple h is trying to you know underneath vince on the side bring it back and and, and yeah i agree with you i i think that you know the, the big fight element is part of what's lost i think in wrestling right now is that and it's because they have to fill so much time they have right. like 
like f- at least five hours a week program, if not no more than that, than for the, of a week that they have to a fill all yeah. these matches and fill all this time and all this stuff, and it, and it becomes meaningless at a certain point. Like the reason I think that. The, the, what I would like to see from that time period is like the they had no they had the the marquee talent wrestle no name guys that were just like local no name guys to save the the marquee matches right. for big events so that they could become a big draw like you have this guy beat a bunch of local guys you have this guy beat a bunch of local guys until they're both come up against each other at a big event and that was kind of like the fun of back in the day and in between yeah. you would have all these cool interviews with guys like me and Gene and yeah they have gotten a little too far away from that you know honestly. Uh, over the holiday, well, actually, just uh, New Year's Day, it was announced that uh, Cody Rhodes, who is the son yeah. of Dusty Rhodes, who's a legendary wrestler, is uh, launching his own wrestling company with uh, a billionaire behind it. He uh, owns the Jacksonville Jaguars and he owns Fulham FC, and they're starting their own kind of like they're starting their own wrestling federation that that I believe is going to harken back to kind of like some of some of these things that, that I hope that so. those fans are looking for. Because you know the big thing is too is that titles don't mean anything anymore. You know, like in, inside of like whether it's Schmodown or anything, dude, the titles need to mean something. So here's a perfect example. Um, I was watching I was watching wrestling over the holiday, and so these wrestlers, uh, Bobby Roode and who's his partner, uh, Chad Gable. Chad Gable defended the titles against uh, the was it the was it the revival. revival. Yeah. So these revival. These are guys that lose every week. I went to see Raw with him, right? And I go, well, they're just gonna come out and lose, and they lost. They lose every week. Bobby so, and Chad. Sure. No, I like no, not Bobby, the revival. Bobby and Chad. Bobby and Chad are the good guys. So oh. revival the or the guys. I was gonna that they, say I like like your Organize odds against two guys named Bobby and Chad. But they're the champions. Bobby and Chad are the champions. But these guys, these revival guys, come out and they keep losing and they lose all the time. Yeah. And in the storyline, they apparently walk up and they go, "We want a title shot." They go, "All right," and they give them a title shot. They, like, you don't earn, you didn't earn that. It's like, and I know, and again, it's, you you can stay inside the scripted thing because you're because you're as a as a guy you're like, well, who cares? It's scripted anyway. If you make it seem that way, then everyone will accept it that way, as opposed to the guys who earn it. Yeah, well, I mean, the whole fun, I mean, just like watching movies, the whole fun is when you can suspend your disbelief. I mean, that's what makes movies bad, too. When you watch a movie or a TV show, you're like, well, this is stupid. Like, this isn't believable. Like, right. This would never happen, depending on which genre you're watching or whatever. But, like, I think, yeah, wrestling the same way. Like, same yeah, way. yes, we know. It, it's scripted when they go up and ask them. Yeah. But, like, you've got, like, a team of 15 writers, right. and that was what the room right. of 15 writers who came thinks, up with. Like, what, what wrestling fan thinks, Revival's going to pull this out? <laughs> No, no, it's a waste of a fucking match. It's a tu- it, it, it really is wow. a tough thing to do. I mean, that that's one of the huge things for me that separates wrestling from film and suspending your disbelief. Because I can see a great fictional sports movie about Bobby and Chad. And I can root for Bobby and Chad in that movie. And then after the two hours, I'm done with Bobby and Chad. I had a great experience right. with them. With wrestling, okay, so I'm a fan of Bobby and Chad. So now I have to continue on this storyline right. that is not real for years, and, yep. and I just have to live my Do life by like the TV fact shows? that TV shows don't get into like me the Night same. Lights. I never watched Friday Night Lights, mm-hmm. no. And it's like I think part of it is just the the encapsulation of what the storyline is. There's a beginning, there's a middle, and an end, and it just seems like no, there's with, a middle and an end for, with wrestling. For these shows too. It just seems like it, it it always because of what he's saying. There's so much content that you have yes. to fill day in and day out. Where I don't want to dedicate that much of my time. Like even if I'm watching a TV show and I tune in once a week, it has it's it's not my sport. So my sport is the NFL, where I will watch the games, but I will also watch coverage of the NFL day in and day out because I know that it's right. real, allegedly. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It, yeah, it, but that's, it feels that's, more real than wrestling. Right again, that's, yeah. that's just because you're choosing f- to watch it for a sports element. Now, there's people who choose yeah. to watch it for the show element. Yeah, I don't watch do it for the sports it. element the slightest bit. I watch it because, uh, you know, it's literally the only show that's like I've had my whole life that hasn't been canceled. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. Like Simpsons, I, that and The it, Simpsons. That and The Simpsons, right. true, yeah. But like, right. it's literally like the one right. thing where I'm like, oh, that's always going to be there. And to be yeah. honest with you, when I started my site, it was like, Oh, oh, okay, great. Like you know, there's a like a three hours here. You know, it wasn't as extreme. They have upped the the level of content in just the three years since I've lost yeah. my site to like well, levels to where I can't even follow yeah, that, it all. There's there's th- there's there's Raw and SmackDown. Raw's three hours. SmackDown is two hours. Then there's 205 Live, which is an hour. There's NXT, which is an hour. There's uh, NXT UK, which is two hours. And that's not including that's all the other little shows that they have, too, right? See, that's it. Do you you probably hear that a lot from from fans? Is that because that was even something that started to wear on me a little bit when I would do Jedi Council like all the time when I used to wake yeah. up that early? Is is 
okay, well, Ellis is going to weigh in with his opinion on the Star Wars movies and possibly Rebels, but I, I don't have, I'm not reading the books, I'm not reading the right. comics, I'm not following everything in canon, I'm gearing up for the movies. Right. And so you have that experience of waiting for the next thing, and now with Star Wars, there's so much Star Wars content that is out and is going to be out, I think it's probably the same thing with wrestling. It's Very like simple. if there were like yeah. 90 different football leagues, I would have, it'd you be so choose. much harder and, Well, that's why I, that's why a lot track. of the fan base, too, sometimes will be like, well, I'm a Raw fan, I'm a SmackDown fan, and they sometimes you know, when you go to yeah. like, they'll boo the, the Raw fans will boo the SmackDown fans, and, yeah. Yeah. and they, they they go for that. You know, and and some people same... only watch Raw, like 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 my dad. Like he's been watching wrestling my whole life, and he only watches Raw. He doesn't care right. about all the other ones. He's like, no, I like watching Raw. I'm gonna watch. That's Raw. why he's they were there. smart mm -hmm. to separate them as far as two separate leagues. Yeah, I think that the idea of a universal championship is ridiculous. Totally, the belt is awful, and, but that's another thing. And really? those companies, yeah, I just uh, like all those shows I just listed. That's just WWE. There's still like other companies that have shows during the week, and I'm the same way with you as as it comes. Star Wars thing, like that's honestly it's partly why I came here is because they're gonna help me like with a staff and people because I physically can't watch all, all of that. Stuff, like yeah. I want to, I try. I, I'm up to like midnight watching wrestling when I can, but it's like there's only so much I can watch. Right. And then that, that's why I was binging Black Mirror and so excited to talk about it because I hadn't been watching non wrestling stuff. <laughs> right, so right. I feel the exact same way about DC content. I watch seven hours of DC content every single week. How mm -hmm. am I supposed to keep up with every single uh, every single comic book that they are dropping? Like I I can't keep up. And I people do, are yeah. like, all of a sudden they're like, you didn't read the Aquaman New Fifty Two, and then you didn't know that that was taken from this and I'm like I did but it was a long time like right. I, it, it, it's really challenging yeah. and having to have opinions on all of it yeah. you know like not just consuming it but right. covering it, it having can't, opinions it can't just on pass it. over you no, gotta know no, like, right, yeah, right, like, right. Like, like, yeah no I'm, well, I'm, I'm the same way whatever you're the expert on if yeah. you don't it's challenging yeah, absolutely. especially look and again because for someone like Ryan too who came into wrestling I think around the Attitude Era right yep. so like to go back and have to study guys like Mean Gene and, and, and it's exhausting people go all the time like oh you know about this thing that happened in 1982 and I'm like I was born in 1986 no right. I don't I didn't see that you right. know so yeah but you've seen Savage for Steamboat yeah All yeah right, I, I go back and I watch as much again to be honest with you I watch every night before bed I watch old WCW because it just fascinates me because yeah. it's so drastically different no, than I what you it. see now it's so good it, it's so good it's great I love it like not even Nitro like I watch like the Saturday night and like all that kind of stuff yeah. where it's like the weirdest matchups. You're like that guy wrestled that guy yeah. 20 years ago, like crazy. You know, I know. yeah, I love it. I love that's what I want. That's what I watch. Well, yeah. I appreciate you coming in here, dude. Uh, again. Tribute to the the great Mean Gene Oakland. He was a staple of my childhood for sure. Watching him in WWF, he'd be missed young at seventy six yeah. years old. So Ryan, thank you. Make sure you check out ProWrestlingSheet dot com. Check out the YouTube channel. Check out uh, YouTube dot com slash c slash Wrestling Sheet. Yep. Follow it on social media at Wrestling Sheet all across the board. It's ProWrestlingSheet dot com. Uh, fact check news, exclusive content. Uh, you can get that's where you should get your wrestling news. So go check it out there. There you go, Ryan Satin. Thank you, Ryan. Did, Did not happy new year. need to make the nearest resolution to be happier, more positive. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> He's got it. He's In the words it. of a great man, get back to work. Get back to work. Um, so how I don't your... get why this company doesn't think that that's legitimate. Like get back to work is a legitimate thing to say. No, it, it, it just depends on... It, it, it is. It depends on what, when and what's happening. It's like if some people are talking about entertainment, and it's not like they're talking about something ridiculous that doesn't have... To pertain to this, Collider talks about television. He we talk said about... he was talking about Black Mirror for ten so what? minutes. So what? Maybe he's got some ideas. And some uh, right. how yeah. long ten minutes? I think minutes is? I think anything that you have to say to put a pin in this conversation is worthwhile because if somebody's talking about Black Mirror and they're getting the spoilers, you need to say something drastic like either shut the fuck up right, right <laughs> now or get back to work. Why can't you just say? Hey guys, I actually haven't seen it yet. Would you not mind he not might, spoiling he might, it? Maybe already yeah. did that. It's probably. Oh, oh way we would have heard about that. I don't know. Um, I, I have a question know. for you because I won't bring this up, and I would something I wanted to talk about, but I can talk about it next <coughs> week because I know sometimes you don't like to talk about these things. What uh, is it? Uh, wait, or what's wrong with mommy and daddy? No, nothing wrong with us. Uh, are you guys staying together? It's it was Apatow, and I uh, saw a lot of Triple E's. Chad Apatow, yeah, and Chad Apatow and Louis C.K. C.K. You'd rather not talk about it. I don't know what's going on. You haven't heard anything. You don't know no. what's going on. All right, Louis so, what, so I mean, I know I, I I woke up and I saw on Twitter that uh, that Louis had done a set. All right, so let me tell you what happened, and okay. you can chime in or not if you okay. don't want to. Um, so Louis C.K. over uh, the last couple of days, I guess, did a set. Um, it was taped. You know, mm -hmm. something that we don't like when people do. You know, Hate it, it, yeah. it, it's it's something that shouldn't be done. You don't like what? Oh, when somebody no, it should, it, I, I've, you. I've had my thoughts on this. That people when they're on stage, um, it is the church. It is they are they are in the club working out stuff and people recording and releasing it and stuff. It's 
without Ooh, without okay. the artist's consent. I hate, but yeah. what I hate even more is like, because I I and I'm not defending Louie, because now it's like every time this this guy does a set, we have to fucking hear about it. Right. Well, but he, it's like so it's, well, it's, he, it's did a, people, he did a joke about the Parkland shit. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. But like, I people were transcribing the the the, the set, Students, yeah. and it's like you're reading now. You're reading the jokes that were told, and it's like, well, that's. Is, that's not what stand up is. Stand up is not, hey, I'm going to say something, write it down because I think this is going to be right. funny on social right. media. It's like stand up is stand up. So I don't know how well or how poorly it translates because I didn't actually read any of the jokes. So you're saying you would I just actually saw the rather, you'd rather somebody release footage than a transcription. <laughs> if I had, if to, you had have to pick one, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would footage, totally right. do footage now, all day now, long. Yeah. So Apatow came out and Apatow blasted Louis C.K., just said he's completely. Um, out of out of touch and that he was, he, he was also making fun of pronouns and um, just, what people go by right. and it was not like just the gender shooting. specificity yeah. yes, yeah. yes 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 okay. so so Apatow just went I'm after making fun of it I don't know if that's the right term just, but well, talk I didn't about see it. any of this. but Apatow just said it wasn't funny and everything. and so a lot of people took Apatow's side a lot of people went after him our, our buddy Sam Tripoli yeah. you know went after him um, here's where I stand on it okay um, I think because of all the stuff that happened with Louis C K mm -hmm. He should be cautious on things that he says, you know, um, because people are watching. People are he, he he's he's under he's under the uh, the scope right now. He's got to be you know. There's there's things that you should be cautious of, and there's things he can't do what he used to do. Right now, you can't do what you used to do because. Um, you are in a different place. You are in a different place. You did a lot of just a lot of shit, right? So, but the thing is this. As a comedian, he has the right to continue to do what he did. Mm -hmm. He can, That's what he's always done. He has the right to do that inside of the set. Okay, I think it's in bad taste. I think that it's it's. I think they're bad jokes. I don't think they're funny. I think as a comedian, he has a right to try it. Um, but that same thing to be said, Apatow has the right to say that ain't funny. Um, he, he can say it the same way that I think that, you know, certain movies aren't good. But a comedian, if he's in a club, has the right, if it's inside of his set, to say what he wants to say. It is the audience. It's the same way that McCuga's family walked out of st of this movie. They Holmes, can go, Holmes and Watson. They can, say, that's, they can say, that's not funny. Didn't go well, Mark. That sucks. You're a terrible comedian. I'm out. <laughs> Tiffany Haddish walked the room in New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve, right? Oh her, man, she bombed hard. Hard. Her material now, granted, not offensive. She just wasn't prepared for her shit. And people said, "I'm out." Yeah. It is the audience's right to say, "I paid for a ticket. I'm out." But it is the comedian's right to try to do whatever they want to do and take whatever shots you want to take. And you think he still has that right? He look. It I, is, I don't it, agree or disagree. I'm just curious yeah, what you're saying. I think that he is the right. It is. Now, he talked to the club owners, and the club owner said, you can have a spot. What club was it? I, yeah. f I forget what club it was. But he went up, and I again, I will start. The I'm going to start by this. I'm going to yeah. start by saying That's this. I, I think that all of his jokes yeah. were bad. Yeah. I think that they were in poor taste. Yeah. I think that they shouldn't have been said. But by, I think he had the right. Okay. By, yeah. by, by anybody. But. I think he had the right to try it as a comedian. I just think that they were all bad. I think in the particular case of Louis, I think that he has the right to try it as a comedian if if he is announced as part of the lineup because I don't think that if he's with, announced as with part, his right. history, yeah. I I don't think that it's fair to an audience to just surprise them. To have a surprise a pop point. in by Louis C.K. Good point. I don't think that that I think that that can make people feel uncomfortable. They right. paid for a ticket to see I don't want to watch this guy and now this other guy comes in I don't so so I don't I don't agree with that because that's the first thing the seller did when he initially came back is it was like a surprise pop in right. which he used to do all the time right if David Tell wants to do a surprise pop in if Chappelle wants to do a surprise pop in you, you're, have at it you're you're one hundred percent right but with, uh, yeah. with with the specific case of material getting out there into the public okay now look if I'm Louie I'm probably figuring out any way that I can be apologetic and address what I did and try to. Try he to doesn't spin that. seem like he doesn't seem like he gives a shit. The at all. same thing, though, in no. the same vein, I think it's very. I, I I don't like the fact that people are going to take this set that I'm reading about now 
third and fourth hand accounts of this, and then I'm going to go give my thoughts about that account on Twitter because I wasn't at the club, so now I'm reading about what this person said about that person yeah. said. And the other thing you have to remember is that Louis C.K. is a comedian. Let's take Louis's name out of it. Yeah. Let's say that this was somebody, that this was a comic that we like. Let's Rick say Ingram. That, let's say this was Carrot Top, oh. okay? Let's say Carrot Top wants to go up and talk about some sort of controversial subject, yeah. okay? Now, Carrot Top has never talked about this subject no, before. No, I know where you're going So with he this, yeah. is writing new material, and you have to test in front of a live audience. Yeah. It, it, nothing starts and, out gold. And, but that's, you have to mind no, no, that. No, I know, I know. That's, and a and lot that's, of the subjects that controversial comics talk about did not start out funny. It talked. It, it I'm started with you. out and, as controversial. And that's where that's where. So it has to be mind mind. And that's any yes. comic. That's not me defending. No, no, really. no. And he's done. He's that's done, just how comedy. That's is. how he has always been. And he did it. And he and he right. did it on Saturday Night Live, which was when again. You say he, you're talking about it's Louis C.K. And he did it on Saturday Night Live when he did some. He did some really bad jokes about the uh, the, the pedophiles. Mm -hmm. um, and oh, he's yeah. he's he's always been that way. For yeah. what you're saying, this is before the the, the controversy, mm -hmm. right? And so, but yes, as a comedian, once again. He has the right to try out whatever he wants to try out. I, again, think, just like the pedophile joke, the jokes aren't funny. And I yeah. think that they're bad. But if, but I happen to agree with you very much so here in the fact that, like, if he was on the bill and you knew he was going there you're paying to see him, yeah. then it's, it's fair game. But if you, if you surprised him with it, that, that's, that's a trickier thing because... A yeah. lot of people don't but want to see Louis C.K. right now. There, there is, there's a huge part of me that is like, what, given what Louis C.K. sins have been, then I think it's fair for anybody to go on social media and say, I can't believe this motherfucker talked about this yeah. and this and this and yeah. this and this. And that's partially why people are doing it. They're yes. not doing this about anybody else's Well, that's why I said he's got to be careful on pulling yeah. back. And so that he, should, he should think about that right now because he is under the microscope. And he should, he, I don't think he, I think that there's other but stuff he could have said he knew people were going to talk about. Aren't there yes. better jokes? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Like, can't, why yes. do we have to go out for a Parkland why that, do we? Like, I agree. Why does there have to be a rape joke? Why does it like? Why there's better jokes? There's that, better that's, fucking. That's jokes. my point. Is that you don't agree? Yes, you've done it in the so. past, but you don't need like right now. If that's the case, you should stay away from that shit, man. I mean, I, if I was if, if I was his friend, I would yeah. say you might want to stay away from that stuff right now because yeah, people are talking about you again, but in a bad light again. And we just had a lot of bad press before, and this is not. I mean, this is a thing. I, I, there's two sides to it. It's. You're well, in the com you're in the comedy club. Yeah. You're testing out your stuff and you should be able to do it. But everybody else who's watching has a has a right to say that ain't funny. There's another side that's that's a little darker to it. Yeah. And I think that side is that there is always gonna be with the way that the world works now, you can there there's websites for everything, there's there's Twitter groups for everything, no matter how nefarious or seedy or positive it is. He's going to find a fan base with material like that. Yep. And that's the that's the unfortunate thing. Right. Now it's not me, but there is it, you're whatever you want to talk about. You know, you can talk about some sort of sexual fetish you have, and those people are going to come out to see yeah, if yeah. I'm Mark Ellis, the 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 toe sucking comic. People are going to come out who like right. to hear material that, about sucking toes. Are you into that now? Dude, huge. Sex. Why'd you say that with huge. a Scottish accent? Because he's already. Are you into that now, Mark? Yeah. Into that. Yeah. You're holding the brave Oh, yeah, I like the twos. The yeah, other people are already lost on him. He can't do those jokes and get that fan base. The the jokes that you were talking about that aren't mm -hmm. those CD jokes. He's lost that fan base. And no, yeah, he, he's, he's, he's lost the majority of his fan base. But yeah. what I'm saying is that there's always. Uh, he's leaning into the There's always a that culture that you get. could lean right. into. If, yeah. if, if, and I'm not sure if he sits down or with his PR team, if he has one, and he's like, okay, this is the approach we have going forward. As far as Judd and Sam goes, I like both of them. I've interacted with both of them. Yeah. Obviously, I've known Sam for a long time. Judd's always been very cool uh, when we do shows together. I have no idea what their beef is or what well, the Tripoli, genesis of it was. Tripoli but. was basically saying that I mean he, he called Apatow out and said that Apatow had like a had a buy in because of who he was that he was allowed to be one of us per se you know that's what he said in, in his tweet and that he shouldn't just be calling out people because he can um, as where Apatow is calling out the the fact that the nature of the jokes were basically saying that Louis C.K., which I don't disagree with, has lost the empathy. Mm -hmm. uh, he never really was an empathetic comedian. Never was. Um, but after the events that he had, you'd assume that he'd, he, he'd want to be. Try. Yeah. I just don't necessarily think that he that he has showed or felt any remorse for anything that he's done. Do I just, it's my personal not. opinion. Do you guys think before he runs anything like that, he calls like... Sarah Silverman or somebody who get like I think there's a lot I, of people that have just ditched him maybe. 
that have what? That have ditched him. I think those those friends. That yeah, but she came out and she said she like she was torn and she was. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure he still has friends in the comedy community, and I don't but know. People he runs these by. Like, do you think this is a good idea? This is what I'm thinking about doing. Or he do you never think really he just... seemed like that kind of person to me. I mean, he always yeah. seemed like like his show. He he did everything. I mean, he 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 didn't direct all the episodes, but I think he edited, edited. most of them, and and it was very much his. It was very much his thing. And I think that that's that that is why he was attracted to the sport of stand up initially. Right. Is that it's just this is just you? Yeah. Was that show still in the air when all the shit went down? It was on hiatus. It was coming oh, back. And it, it's one it. of the yeah. it, to me one of the best shows of all time. Yeah. And and people were waiting for that because mm -hmm. he he had gone on like an eighteen month hiatus, got, dropped another season, was waiting right. now for uh, and obviously right. no that longer. Right. Yeah. I think it had. I think Louis Show had its moments of brilliance. Uh, spaced between a lot of mediocrity, but that's just me. Yeah. No, you're not alone. I mean, the first three seasons are not great, and yeah. then after that, it's yeah. one of the best. But shows again, of all time. I, I think it's such a privilege to be somebody of note in the stand-up uh, community, and and you earn your career for sure. But if you have uh, something in your past as heinous as what Louis C.K. does, then. I think it's a different set of rules you're playing by, and I think it's totally fair game for people to express outrage on something like that, even if it is outrage at what you just talked about on stage. I agree. In the same way that if, if you if you have a clean record, then you're allowed to go up and talk about whatever you want that you think is funny now right. or can be honed into a funny yeah. bit. And I don't think that I, I think that Louis has forfeited some of those rights just because of his behavior, because people are going to feel that strongly about him. Yeah one way or the other. Yeah, I think so, we're, on, we're on the same page. It, it kind of yeah. goes, so uh, um, Amanda listens to this podcast called Crime Junkies, right? And it's just these these two women and they talk about cases, murder cases, basically. And right, it's, it's signed up with it. Yeah, have you heard of this? Before? I listened to it, yeah. You listen it's to great. Crime Junkies. People yeah. love real murder now. Riley's, Riley's a lunatic. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, yeah. I'm a true crime guy. They, yeah, you they, are. I love it. I just put it on because I know that I, my wife will be somewhat entertained in the car ride and I don't have right. to, I don't. You don't have to entertain her? Correct. <laughs> Welcome yeah. to Mary Love. Yeah, I was very, yeah. But so, well, I, I saw, yeah, so yeah, then yeah, I got yeah. like I kind of got interested because we watched we listened to this Personal podcast called Dirty Mark John, Riley. which is now a show on Bravo, right? We listened yeah. to this Dirty John podcast, which was interesting. And a couple oh, of Dirty other, John, we binged yeah, that one it's too. Yeah, Newport Beach too. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Oh, Riley, yeah. Riley like is like a program. Dude, you're Alexa. I, yeah. Yes, I love that. The Dirty John, I highly recommend. It happened right by my grandmother's yeah. house. Right there, like it was all right there. Who walks around and is like, I'm so happy I have all this knowledge of all this evil. Like it's actually like. But so now I know how to combat it. Yeah. But really? I, I am only no. doing this to help you. Okay. It is, okay. It's scary. It's lunatic. creepy. What it, whatever. <laughs> but to hit the Louis C.K. thing, right, is you were talking about the audience that would be there for one of these crappy jokes, right? Like one of these ones, you know, whoever these people are, they're like, oh, yeah, it's totally. Fed Parkland, yeah, it's hysterical. Idiots. But there's also people, like there are women that send love letters and naked pictures to men who have murdered their families in yes. prison. Right. Mm -hmm. There's was, an audience. I mean, there's the an joke, audience. The joke, it's the joke, creepy. The joke w stemmed around the fact about millennials and 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 how they th how important they think they are, and and I and it came into Apatow just saying how it's just look, Louis C.K. has always come off as a crotchety old man. Yes, and that's that's what it was. But it's just the joke's in really bad taste. Yeah, it's in very bad taste. Yeah, and, yes. but again, once again, when you're in a comedy club, I've seen. Look, we have a mutual friend. Dave Taylor, mm -hmm. okay, very funny comedian, says everything in bad taste. Yes, and I've seen some bombs before, and then I've seen Dave Taylor bombs. I've seen, I've, I've, <laughs> but but the yeah. but the difference is with Dave Taylor is Dave Taylor is not is you know, not difference between Lucy K, but D Dave Taylor when he's up there is not is is he's just saying mm -hmm. whatever the fuck Dave Taylor wants yeah. to say. Um, or and, uh, Jim Painter, you know, Jim Painter, like yeah. the, the Brian Holtzman. Yeah. There are guys out there that are just that's their thing, and that's what they say. And once again, to hammer it down, in a comedy club, you have the right, if you're on stage, to say whatever you want. It is the club's choice to put you on again, because if you're going to walk their audience, if the audience doesn't want to hear you anymore, they're not going to go to that club anymore if you continue to be there. It is the club's right, it is the comedian's right to try whatever they want, but as a business owner... You should say to that person, "Hey, we don't like that joke. Yeah, <laughs> don't do it again. <laughs> you don't. I mean, like, you can go down this free speech rabbit hole where it's like, yeah, I can say whatever I want on yeah. stage. I'm the comic, and then people can tweet about whatever they want about my show afterwards. And they can mm -hmm. say, I can't believe he said this or he said right. that. And, and you have the right to do that. I'm just telling you, if you are an audience or if you're a consumer of any of this stuff, do not put a lot of stock in what an audience has to say as far as, oh, then Mark talked about this subject and right. this subject because you weren't there, so you have no idea. It's very I know, hard." But this, this 
a little hard though. Conte- people- but context wise, I mean, it's pretty. It's pretty black and white. The context. I, I know that you're saying you can say, and it's the old George Carlin thing. I said you can shit say, at the when I was ringing in the New Year two know, nights ago and, and, that and I'm it, like, I, I wouldn't be. And I know what you're saying. I, I it's, tone, it's tone and voice <laughs> on Twitter. No, but it's tone. But it's tone of voice. It's the way you say things. It's movements. It's actions. It's the way that you can make things funnier. But there's nothing really funny inside of that thing. And. Anyway, we can go on and on and on. Um, let's. Anyway, uh, yeah. I'll be uh, in Phoenix yeah. and New York, and you yeah. can come judge all you want. And uh, but the next big date, January twelfth. January twelfth. We, we talked about it, but we'll talk about it again. Oh, did you? Yeah, we'll talk about it again. January twelfth. There, are, there are tickets left. I told people go to event. You can Google this uh, Eventbrite. Check out Schmodown. <laughs> You're going to be hosting. You the can also year just go to markellislive.com. Oh, can you get tickets Boom. there too? You can get tickets oh, great, at great. Uh, You're very hosting. excited to excited? host this thing. Yeah, I can't wait to get on the main room stage to host this I'm event. I'm excited that we got like this two one. It's going to be so around. fun. Do I, I know what I'm going to say? Yeah. Probably a lot of stuff that's going to get on Twitter in the wrong way. <laughs> the next no, day. but seriously. Like, right. Appetite you, will be there. Can I help? write it down? No, I mean, I'll you did last memorize. year, didn't you? I had, uh, I had, a, you had some good I had ones notes that I had taken for like a couple days before. Was my yeah. was my process, so I might get a little more involved this year, but I haven't really yeah. started. No, Alex, are you going to wear the orange suit? Thinking about it. Yeah. Are you going to wear the orange suit, or is my tuxedo still rolled up in a ball in your closet? <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, those are my two options. Yeah. I'm not going orange suit again. Okay. No, you did that for spectacular. It's going to be some sort of yeah. orange yeah. that I will that, that I will you know display to the crowd. Right. But um, yeah, it's a it's a really fun club, and I love the fact that we were able to make tickets as inexpensive is there because yeah. people spend a lot of money to enjoy us on patreon to come out to matches and stuff these things are 15 bucks, 15 bucks. and it, the show that you're going to get and you is party, you're partying with the whole crew literally so. everybody i saw janine tweeted out what like she's already figuring out what she wants to wear oh yeah and, like, and that's the thing so everybody's going to be dressed, dressed up everybody's dressed up oh, tonight like, like we're going what? to the oscars yeah like we're going to the oscars we're all dressed up i'm, I'm I, got, I got a tux i have an outfit you do i got a, i got a tux I for love that sweatshirt by the way Thanks, yeah. that's great I have a tux for that night mouse. because the next night is the the Critics Choice Awards. I'll take tons of pictures oh, for you. So many pictures. I'll see if I can get Patrick Stewart. Oh, please, I will, please I will. do. You know who I'm taking? You know who my you know who my guest is? Because I wrote to I wrote to Ellis yesterday. I said, hey, you know, I, Ellis had first shot. I was going to give Ellis a shot to see if he wanted to go. But I knew I know him too well that he's doing the Schmodown Awards the day before. He's not going to want to dress up two days in a row. So I asked him, and he, and, I, and, I, and you yeah, said no. And he said no. I, 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 the so shows I want to see if, I want to see if people Unless can guess who I'm taking. Can you guess? Kind of Roka. I wasn't the invite. You said Roka? Yeah, I bet Roka. Bonnie? You say Bonnie? I agree with Roka. Bo- you say Roka. The answer is Dom Dagnino. I mean, <laughs> oh, I my God. That, you, Makuga, you were, you were, you were, <laughs> if Dagnino said no, you were next. Got it. Um, because Where I take, am I? You, I, you I, I take, Where on this list am yeah. I? I thought I, I, about I don't, that. I don't need to go. You were on, you, you were, you were, you're my, like, premier guy. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. was coming to the, he was going to get the awards. I'm the, uh, hey, I want you want to go to Creed 2 and never take me, guys. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Or go to the screening at AMC. <laughs> sure, yeah, right, yeah, right, right. Yeah. Um, but I think Dagnino at the Critics' Choice Awards is going to be something to behold. Here's the thing. It's nothing that I'm going to be, like, hyped up that night to be like, oh, no. what are Christian and Tom going to get right. into? But I'm going to tell you what thing. I said. Go ahead, I'm listening. Is that the Critics' Choice Awards, or really any awards like that, Golden Globes or even Oscars, This it, it, Dagnino has a way of, that's not unlike a Ferris Bueller quality, where it's like if there's a room that's for VIPs that is not for Christian and Tom, he is going to find He'll a way find yeah. to not just get in there himself, but he's taking the entire crew yeah. that he rolls with I don't know how he's able to do it because if he was at the Critics' Choice Awards with all of us, he'd We'd get all of us in there. There's only room. one person better than him in in, in, in situations uh, like that. Uh, Winkleman. No, Dorina. Dorina's mm. the best I've ever seen. Really? She's the best I've ever seen to get into parties and events. There's huh. there's no at one Comic Con. She's the she's the person to see. There's no there's there's no one better. Solid edibles. So. Um, Roxy, I want you to read this. This is the text that I sent to Dagnino um, yesterday. How I invited him. This is how we speak to one another. And I, it's just, again, I just, this him, this, that big paragraph right there. Um, Saw him on New Year's Eve. Out loud or yeah, yeah, you know, out, okay. out loud. Here we go. Hey, you disgusting animal. <laughs> Do you want to come with me to the Critics' Choice Awards? It's the day after the Schmodown Awards. Only catch is you have to actually dress up and can't wear weirdo stuff. <laughs> Show up on time. You have to spell it out. To which Finstock said, ha ha. 
Yeah, man. Yeah, that was it. That was it. So, but I just, I was like, you know, because he's gonna show. Up. Stuff. You know yeah. what I mean? Though he's gonna show up to the Critics' Choice Awards with like, a, with like okay, half shirt. Stuff, yeah. And like, I'm like, an no, 18th you century actually, karate gi. I've never seen did him you, actually dress up. Did you see what he wore at my ugly sweater party? <laughs> no. What the hell was it? was like that white. It was like a Japanese kimono. It was a geisha outfit. Geisha outfit. I'm like, you know, it's ugly sweater. He's like, yeah, this is festive. He looked like he looked like Ken Watanabe's. Friend yeah. Len Watanabe, <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> in like as an extra and crouching tiger hidden dragon. I'm not. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell him. Listen, I'm not. I'm not letting you go if you're dressed in a weird well, shit. Well, the good news about Finn's like, I would have worn something normal. You don't have to worry you. about him burning his good suit on the Schmodown Awards because right. he'll wear weirder shit that day. It's yeah. going to be something out. Yeah. I don't know. If I he's want him, but I want him to wear. Yeah, he's he's fine. He's okay. I want. It's it's he's feud right Is now. Is anybody banned? We got to figure out this Andrew Guy situation. We have to have a rule Dude, summit about that. Him. We got to have a we have, we have to have a whole rule summit. About I know. We got to figure it out. How can you yeah. ban somebody who's nominated for so many things though? Uh, they didn't let the, they haven't let people in the Oscars before. Well, you, or, broke, well, you broke a table. <laughs> Roman Polanski wasn't allowed in the country, so that's why he wasn't at the Oscars. Jeremy so. Piven's not allowed at the Comedy Store. I know. Is that still true? <laughs> yeah. Really? What did he do? I, I I, when I booked the show for the Battle Buddies show, I'm talking to uh, <laughs> the girl, and there, I, I was like, she's like, you can book anybody you want, just not. This person and Jeremy Piven. And I was like, <laughs> right. That's why. That's why I got the headlining call. <laughs> was it. it was going to be nights. Piven, but I but went with Ellis. Right. Two yeah. nights ago, I was driving, and it was like one thirty in the morning, and Piven was on the radio oh. ta- talking about uh, talking about literally just that. Oh, they was banned from comedy. Uh, it, like it was brought up, and then he moved on, and he was talking hmm. about like. How his mom used to run lines with him and uh, being Ari Gold. She run lines or do lines? Run, oh. run lines with him, <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and he would say to her like, "Get out of here, Lloyd! Give me that dildo!" And she'd be like, oh. "I need you to really believe in the dildo more." And he would be like, "Okay, mom." And I was like, "Wow, this his dude's parents weird. own a theater in yeah. Chicago. They're very oh, huge they? in the I theater world." I guess world, she's right? like a big teacher, but it was. Like, yeah. I was like, yeah. "Wow, this guy's got a, a he, weird life." Want yeah, to see more I always remember him in. Uh, he was a very small part in it, but one crazy summer. See one crazy summer. Oh, I love that. No, movie. I still yeah, have. Yeah. Have you ever seen one crazy summer? No. Oh, you, I would, you would love it. Such a movie for you. Yeah. Rent that well, movie. Well, because PCU is dude. Ron, PCU is but He's a bad guy in one crazy summer, but it's it's, it's John. It's Cusack. John Cusack. They John used to Cusack. be really but, tight. Yeah, and right, now they're, they're not. Yeah, why? But no, but he yeah they had a lot of movies together. But but uh, one crazy summer mm-hmm. is is Great him. Again, also family. Oh no, no, that was that was Nicholas Cage. But AK Spider Noir. Yes, but one crazy summer has. As um, what's his face, John Cusack, Demi Moore is uh-huh. the lead. That's right. Bobcat Goldthwait. Nice. It, it is. I love that movie. Okay. It's an hour and twenty minutes. Too. Uh, <laughs> so if I can just get a real quick like. There's that Bowie. There's that Bowie. <laughs> Sorry, I just screamed. Is that, that, is that your Bobcat? Yeah, it's pretty good. Thanks. Pretty good. Uh, so yeah, Holmes, not, hey, hey. I, I every trailer and like ad I saw for Holmes and Watson, I'm like, look, you guys know nobody loves Step Brothers. I think it's one of the uh, great comedies ever put ever, on film. Ever. Holmes and Watson, just the accents were like, I'm like, this is not for me. Right. Mm. It's mm. Uh, Mark. Um, you know, I have some major regrets in my life. Uh, one wasn't going to the Super Bowl in Detroit. Uh, two was going to see Holmes and Watson. Wow! And uh, dude, his whole family, his whole family walked. No, it was my. So it was the in laws. Everybody left. I was the only one left in the theater to watch Holmes and Watson. It was. You left them alone. It it was like watching David Taylor bomb over and over and over and over. And I love David Taylor. He's a Pittsburgh fan. It, it the, the the Holmes and Watson jokes were worse than any jokes that we could think of. Yeah. Like it was really yeah. bad. See, I'll, I'll get, I'll get something out of a David Taylor bomb, though, yeah. and yeah. I'll be like, okay, that was yeah, funny yeah. to me. Not yeah. to the, this feels like something where it's like somebody's just trying to please the crowd, and they're doing a yeah. bad character. We yeah. know comics like that. The band, the band reunited when they were just had no business reuniting. No, dude, did y'all hear For the, the best rumor go of all ahead, time? Go ahead. Okay, I know it, what you're talking about. This is this is totally. I know. It's not totally smile on his face. It, but it, it's you're gonna like it, and everybody I know what in it is. The, the world is gonna like. I saw your tweet. So the rumor is <laughs> that Michael Anthony, the original bass player mm-hmm. for, for Van, Van Halen, is gonna be back in Van Halen for a tour in 2019. Now here's where it gets very interesting. Is David Lee Roth hinted, and David Lee Roth again hints a lot, and the hints don't end up to be anything. He teased the fact that there's gonna be a big summer show. At Yankee Stadium, that's cool. That is going to be 
Foo Fighters, Metallica, Guns N' Roses, Whoa. Would you fly to New and York the Mighty Van Halen. There is no what? way that I would not fly to <laughs> yeah. New York. Yeah. Would, you pay, would you pay whatever? It doesn't, doesn't matter, matter go how much. You'd go. I would take all of my fucking Patreon money, money and I'd say, Christian, I'll pay you back. Nice. And that's it. Wow. That's um, the concert. Yeah. yeah. That's... I'm gonna, I would start a Patreon just to, just get to do it. it. Yeah. Well, all right, before, and, and I'm sure you would, but actually uh, it reminds me of something I wanted to bring up before we, uh, I would take one phone call. As far as the Patreon goes, and for people who did do not know, the first thing was Shmodown Awards. The Shmodown Awards will air on, um, they won't let me live stream, but they will air on the Shmo's No channel. You can go and check that out. It's the week before, or the week of the live event, which is January 26th in New York. So there are a couple of things that happened over the, the break. With Shmodown Spectacular, I announced that um, you know we're, Shmodown's leaving Collider. And starting in January, we'll be on the Shmo's No channel. Now a couple things have changed since that announcement, and let people let some people know that um, we got a really an outpouring of support, mm -hmm. and because we're renting out the Collider Studio, we're paying the crew now. We have a lot of expenses that we're taking on, and so we had to up and ask for the support. So initially, what we were going to do is teams and and inner geekdom were going to be Patreon only. And we're only going to live on uh, on the Patreon mm -hmm. on for for people to get it. Now the two dollar tier will get inner geekdom or teams on Monday. The dollar tier will get it on Tuesday. But because of all the great support and because so many people came out to support and did it, the they will also be available on the Schmoes No channel on either Wednesday or Thursday. Wow, that's um, so great. So we were able to do that, Good. and, and I would. Those people who were complaining about him not being there should thank the patrons because the patrons were the, were the were the reason that we're able to do that. So for it's a, a pretty good offer for a for it, a dollar or two dollars. It's two. just it's I just have to say. they 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 were the ones who made it realistic. Because as, mm -hmm. as I was looking and I just got the just the support, and I saw a lot of people. Said, well, listen, there are a lot of people out there that there are some people that just want to bitch. I mean that, that's that's nature. But there are a lot of people legitimately. Like I, this woman had wrote me an email and she's like, every dollar that my family has. Goes to something. Mm -hmm. It goes to. Uh, you know, we don't do the people because people will yell at them and go, "You can't take a dollar away and not get a coffee for that month." And this woman's like, "I can't do that. Yeah, no, dollars I don't, still I, matter. I, I don't do that." So and she's like, "And I'll and we'll miss it because we, we look forward to the team matches and the inner geekdom every week." So then I said to myself, as I'm watching all the patrons come in and, and do this stuff, I was like, "You said can't... send me your finances. <laughs> I want to see where <laughs> oh, every know, dollar's no, going." But I said, "How can I do it? How can I make it work?" And I said, "Well, those two dollar patrons will get it on Monday. The dollar patrons will get it on Tuesday, and then we'll release it probably either Wednesday or Thursday. I haven't come up with that date yet. So Teams and Inner Geekdom will be available to the public um, uh, on the Schmoes No Channel, and it's on the Schmoes No Channel, right? Yes, you which and we're, and which we're rebranding the whole thing to the Schmo Down Channel." Okay. Yes. All right. Did you know that? I, I think I signed off on okay. that. I think I put ink to paper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was no, like a, it yeah. was like a film segment yeah. in a schmodown where Thad just walks in. Hey, Mark, can you sign this real quick? And I'm like, I, I'm yeah. not sure what I'm signing. But. Right. So I just again, once again, thank you because and and if you are if if you're in the schmodown Facebook group. Please you know, give a thank you to those patrons that did sign up because that's the reason I'm able to do this. Fans have been amazing. The uh, the, the patrons been amazing. The outpouring of support of everybody enjoying the spectacular was awesome to see over the breaks. I could do that from my couch just yeah. watch everybody like reacting to everything. Great, yeah. As we go, I have a movie trivia, and this is a tough question. Oh. And it and it starts with an unfortunate circumstance: is that uh, Super Brox Dave Osborne well. passed away. Yeah. Oh, Super when did that happen? Passed away. Yeah. Oh, what are we talking about? Him and Mean yeah. Gene? This is you know, Marty Funk also from um, uh, Kirby Kirby Dizzy? Dizzy? Yeah. yeah. He passed away today. Yeah. And oh. he used to do like, like funny like, like stunts and stuff like oh, that. He, he's just a great he entertainer, loves right? Super Dave. Watch oh, time. Super so Dave uh, I can't remember what his, what his actual birth name is. But he has a brother in the entertainment industry mm. who is super legendary, famous comedian. Does anybody know? You know the answer. Okay. So everybody's going to get a guess. Then Riley's going to say, who Super Dave's real brother is? Dave Letterman. Incorrect. Good Ga guess. Gallagher. You you get one oh. guess. Skip me. <laughs> no, Gallagher's brother is Gallagher's brother. Oh. No, no. No, no. Proxy. No, no. I don't no, play no. these games. No, no. She doesn't like. Oh, 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 oh I, I thought you said don't skip. Can I guess no, no, for her then? Skip me. You, oh, you already guessed twice, but sure, go ahead. Um. He's the he's one of the best follows on Twitter that you'll ever he, have. He did mm. a comedians in cars no, getting know. coffee. Funkhauser did. Seinfeld. Yeah. It was so good. Yeah. It is not Jerry Seinfeld. No. Josh McCougar. Ralph Biscuit. Is it Andy Richter? It is not Andy Richter. Conan. Mark Riley. 
Albert Brooks. Albert oh, Brooks like that. is the brother of Super Dave. If you do not I follow not Alan, Alan, uh, uh, Albert, uh, Albert Brooks on Twitter, he's, he's phenomenal. He's fantastic following Twitter. There you yeah. go. All right, well, we're not going to be able to take calls today. I thought we were. But we went yeah. We went for a while. Listen, Bad news to report. So it was uh, a yeah. great 2019 first show. I'm happy that you joined us, Mark Ellis. Thank Josh you. McCool, I'll try to look Ryan. better next week. You look great. I took an edible look... last night. Did, how did hey. that go for you? You did. What kind? Did I got to tell you. Mark. Uh, nothing, uh, nothing we're ready. Is this the first time it, you've ever been I high? felt very relaxed. I smoked a bong at my bachelor. I, I, I took it. It was like a relaxing, like like one to you know to go to sleep. Yeah, yeah. And I I, I took Did it. You love it? I, I felt very relaxed. But yeah. as soon as I closed my eyes, I started thinking about a combination creature that is wearing <laughs> the nun uniform from Nightmare on Elm Street Three. Oh. That looks like oh. the nun from the Nun movie. Okay. And then that started to not get out of my head as quickly as I would like. Why don't you just listen to Van Halen? When you stop, I'm going to sleep, man. Oh, all right, I, I'm I'm doing this to chill out. Van oh. Halen is something you Get do you not to chill go. out to. Makes you jump on a bed. Roxy you might be able ass. to recommend you like some of those CBDs, yeah. like the. Sure. Doreena's yeah. great at it too, but it's yeah. you know it's I took an edible, okay. so everybody, I'm trying new right. things in 2019. I like more drugs good. from Mark Ellis. There you go. That's all great. right, guys. So listen, great show here. It's our only show this week, so we will see you oh, on yeah. Monday. For Collider Monday. Live, so make sure you check us out. Subscribe here. Listen to us on the Apple Podcasts or wherever uh, you can find podcasts. And we'll catch you next week, boys and girls.